Episode 200 of the TV Dudes, recorded September 13th, 2018, Best of the Millennium. September 11th. Oh, God. <laughs> that got dark. Wow. wow. Feel good. Yes. It could be a feel-good episode. Jeez. <laughs> 17 <laughs> years. There's definitely a before and after in the entertainment world. Best of post-Hydron Clutter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know yeah. that there's like 82 years left in the millennium. I understand. Or in the century. In the century. Oh, there's a lot more years in the millennium. But I feel like... We've seen some pretty good shows, so we can pretty much we can call it right. Yeah, like this is the best. It's the best it's ever going to get. Go like, big or go all, home. It's all downhill from here. Uh, yeah. So obviously, listeners, we've started the episode and <laughs> we're having trouble figuring out the best way to title this episode <laughs> <laughs> because we've done two hundred episodes, uh, give or take. I and mean, this is kind of us doing like three reboots. Of, of the TV dudes since we originally started. It's kind of like what? there's the champ years, the curly years. It could be like what, what they said, what uh, Danny Ocean said. It's our third 200 episode. That <laughs> yeah, yeah this episode, we wanted to do something special where we do a best episode or a best TV show of each year since... The the quote unquote golden age, which we could we could kind of round off to about 1999, the year 2000. Mm-hmm. So yeah. since the start of this new century, um, and in addition, you guys might be hearing some special voices there. That's because we were able to bring in all the old special guests and original TV dudes, and it's a bonanza. It's episode 200. Whoa. It's a reunion. It's, it's a reunion, a, yeah. It's a bonanza. It is a reunion in voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to get more Kermit the Frog there with my arms. <laughs> ah! I heard your arms. No, I, I hear them. Yeah, yeah listen, I, I didn't mean to hit you there, can hear the arms. Uh, but yeah, let's go around the room and say who's on mic. I'm Grant. I'm Randy. I'm Johnny Neal. I'm Kyle. And you said around the room. There's oh, someone right. who's not in the room. Oh, my God. We're haunted. I, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not in the room. Is there somebody sorry. behind the curtain? And who's this on Skype? <laughs> Yo, it's Gregory's back. Greg. <laughs> Greg Amati oh, spent this year. Yo, Hit the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is calling in from uh, La La Land, I believe. From La La yes. Land. Yeah. He's dancing oh. around with Emma Stone. And... <laughs> yes, yes. And, I, and, I'm and getting... he's not winning an Oscar. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting berated by, uh, what's his name, Ryan, whatever, because I've, I've gone pop. I'm playing a John Legend part in that movie. <laughs> Are you saying there can only be one black person in La La Land? Because that might be accurate. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah that's the only one black person in La La Land that doesn't play jazz. So, because <laughs> Ryan is, is the jazz guy. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when you went to LA, you said, I'm going to go open a, a jazz club so I can show off my autograph collection. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that. And yeah, I thought, you know, I, you know, I said, part, it's th- been done, man. It's been done already. There's already <laughs> one of those out there. <laughs> the, the farther we get away from that movie, you know, I know in the moment it was actually, you know, pretty cool, but it, it gets a little bit more ridiculous every year you look back at it. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Even though he's a talented filmmaker, uh, Damien is a talented filmmaker, but that movie is kind of like, I don't know about that, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as you guys uh, have already probably gotten the gist of, we're going to be talking about La La Land. Yeah, this is the La La Land episode. <laughs> the 200th episode. Uh, no, um, you know, we started this show, what was it? Didn't you just find it? It was, it eight, was years eight years ago, 2010. Eight years ago, uh, and probably about a month or two, a month? Well, Eight, so eight years we, and a month ago. We started, yeah. it, we started it, ironically enough, with a video series, and oh. one of the early episodes was about the Emmys. 
It was, was that about the first one. Was it might have been Emmy Stone. Are we still talking about that? <laughs> uh, the very first one, I believe, we talked about a show called Rubicon. Rubicon. Yes, that was just coming oh. out. That, that's how we uh, kick things off. We're like, I don't know about this show. It might be kind of. I think it's going to go places. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we were wrong about that one. <laughs> it went right in. It went right over the Rubicon. <laughs> uh, but you know, it was I'll, too good. It was just too good. I'll, I'll do. Uh, I'll do. You know, pass the Rubicon, the uh, one season podcast about every episode of Rubicon next year. Oh, jeez. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Grant's going to edit it. You can name everybody who died. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we are glad to have you guys back. What What have you guys been up to? Oh, Lord. Oh, God, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I'll go with a different question. Not a good question. No, what no, TV no, it's a, it's have you been you watching? Start. I've been watching a lot of TV lately. Just I've been watching a lot of TV lately just, just out of – being at home <laughs> yeah like well like i see you post occasionally on like facebook about some shows that you're watching and it seems like uh i mean there's still crossover but i think that you seem to watch uh some shows that i don't necessarily seem to be in my circle i'm really i've really gotten into uh the hbo non-mainstream hbo shows lately like insecure and yeah, I love yeah. insecure. Uh, random acts of flyness that show is just like what? That, what is this show? Where? Who yeah, are that, these people? That yeah, show Greg, is crazy. Yeah, that Greg, show is crazy. I, I saw you talking about it, Johnny, and, I, and we have not talked about that show because I haven't watched it, and, and I know nothing about it. So I'm curious to hear what you guys say about that. Uh, it, man, it's, it, it, it's like young – you know what? It seems like it's where you thought that um, Glover – would have gone if he what you know if if he didn't rein in all his ideas. It's, okay, it's like it's like a surrealistic black performance art thing. It, I, it, I, I, that's the only way I could describe it. I mean, maybe it, Johnny can describe it better than I can, but it's that's what it seems like to me. It, well, that's that's really good, um, but in in some ways, it really reminds me of. Like the early '70s era Sesame Street, the way it's put together, the way yes. you know what I mean. Like, like not how Sesame Street is now with all the CGI and everything. Not that I sit around watching Sesame Street, but <laughs> well, <laughs> outed I do. Sesame I do. Street expert here. But if if you were to watch a Sesame Street from like 1975, you'd go, "Oh, wow, this show was really a, a trippy little experiment," you know that. You you almost kind of go. I can't believe the show lasted the way it, it was. It was so experimental. All the weird little films with countdowns and letters. No, you're you're right because I because since Ellington will be three this fall, I am watching Sesame Street a lot and and a lot of the old stuff. And yeah, it's like it's not like skits that flow into each other. They're definitely like ream like a stream of consciousness things that. Like I mean, Sesame Street obviously had order because they, were tr- they had some ultimate lesson or some um, or some letter or something they were focusing on. This is just it's kind of like it just explores all areas of blackness <laughs> of, of what that means <laughs> in 2018. Now it's it's, it's really unique. <laughs> I, I just it, I don't, it really is hard to describe, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's yeah. all you can really say is it's really not like anything else <laughs> you've ever seen before. So, Greg, yeah. Greg, what else are you watching? Right? What's what's like in your oh. top five right now? Oh God, top five! Jesus, uh, we're not going to hold you to it. It's okay. See. Yeah, you don't have to list all five. Just what's up there? No, what's up well, there? What's yeah. up there now? Uh, you've got the Deuce. Obviously, is back. Um, yeah. Just over the summer, I actually just finished watching Ozark, which I like, but. The way it's shot, it just you know, you have to like watch it with. It's like you just, it's, it's like really a podcast because it's shot so dark you can't see anything in it <laughs> it's anymore. Like, am I wearing my sunglasses? If I yeah. did, I did I not switch glasses when I came <laughs> it, into the house. That blue lens is just. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, didn't you? I think you had a hot take on Ozark. I think you compared it to another show favorably. Wasn't that you? Um, you yes. What did I say? Weren't it was? You, weren't you saying it was better than Better Call Saul? No, oh, it's way better than Better Call Saul. Oh. That was that was Yehudi oh, that yeah. said that. I, I, yeah. thought, I thought that was you. Oh, okay. Easy. No, Yehudi did that post, and oh, I was about okay. to fight yeah. him about that. <laughs> no, I will say, though, that uh, Ozark... You think Ozark is better than Better Call Saul? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Better Call Saul is... <laughs> Better Call Are you Saul, watching it? <laughs> Better Call Saul is two separate shows. One that's really good. It's like and three one, separate shows. And then one, yeah. three, like, oh, yeah. I, and one where I'm going, I know how all these people die. I'm not really <laughs> that interested in their prequel. Really? Because it, Ozark is just like... Um, it, it's... All the problems of 
the shield where they're backing people into a corner and then to another corner and then to another corner with no breathing space. That show is just so grim and dark and everyone is just miserable people. And I'm not rooting for anyone because they're all shitty. Yeah. Well, I, I got to say the that sun. I, I just think that, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a drag that Harris Eulen died, but because uh, yeah. I just love that guy. But um, I feel like uh, the star is um, – He's playing the same Arrested Development character. He's just the greatest straight man in in history. Well, do you think? Just, mm-hmm. Do you think maybe it's like comes except him, for Teen Wolf too? <laughs> everything that comes at him, he's just like, well, okay, let's just. I'm going to keep a straight face and I'm, deal with this. Do you think it's possible that Michael started in a brand new life and and became this character like that? I think Bluth, I do. Yeah, yeah, I think you totally. Michael Blue, kind of how Walter yeah. White came from Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. I, I watch it, it that way. And yeah. It helps. It helps yeah. a lot. If George yeah. Michael well, shows up all of a sudden in an episode, his dad <laughs> his dad became trans and he was like, I'm going to the Ozarks. <laughs> <laughs> that, just that somebody, that, about somebody needs bad. to write that show. Somebody needs to write the show where you <laughs> cross over all your favorite characters and actors where they move into different shows and then just have those worlds all collide. Nobody's done that yet. <laughs> George Michael moved to Twin Peaks for a little while and acted like Marlon Brando. And, yeah, uh, seems like it works. It's like the Avengers universe of cable television. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd so, be down for that. I so, would totally be down for that. Uh, I don't know. If you guys did you guys watch Sharp Objects? I like Sharp uh, so, uh, Sharp Objects. Yes, we did watch Sharp Objects, yeah. and I can't remember what the consensus was on that. You guys I, loved it. I right? just finished it and was like, "Wow, that was a drag." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> it was just when it was over. My wife and I looked at each other and we're like, can you rewind that right quick? What, what was that? <laughs> well, and, then I, and then I go online. I'm like, what What just happened there? Because it was a couple of weeks late. You know, right. yeah. We, yeah. We're big on binging, so we yeah. have shows build mm-hmm. up. And I was like, well, that was kind of a – wow. Greg, what did you think? I thought it was – I thought it was well acted. Um, I thought the – I mean the funny thing is I was, I was watching it with my wife – and she figured it out like halfway through. She goes, oh, yeah, she's got Stockholm Syndrome. And, you know, she thought the mom was the killer, you know. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. oh, maybe. But but I liked, it. I liked the style of it. But it yeah. didn't really feed me. Like, it didn't intrigue me. I was just more like trying to figure out who killed it and, and see if, if any of the things we saw earlier on before it ended – led to that which it didn't i will admit i i was that little the clip at the end is like yeah. this is what johnny's talking about i thought that was cool and i thought it was clever and i thought that was really really cool um the way they they kind of put that together like that so i mean I was, it was okay not you know. only was it the most exciting uh part of the show it might have been the only exciting part of that show <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, so I, slow I, I, and, and sad. i can see that i mean i i, so, so, I mean uh, i it depends. Now I get to the point with TV shows because there's there's the creators that you love and you like and you're interested in when they're doing new things or you're rewatching old stuff that some new stuff comes in. You kind of figure it out like in the first couple episodes and you're like, do I want to hang with this or do I not want to hang with this? And if I hang with this, my expectations are, are like, meh. I like, you know, maybe I like looking at Amy Adams. I think she's a really good actress, you know, yeah, something yeah. like that. What do you do? You also not only do you go, oh, I know where this is going, but you kind of go. I know where this style is going, and it's probably yes. not going anywhere at all. <laughs> yes, and it's like sometimes I'm watching Lodge there. 49 right now, and I'm going. <laughs> I don't think this is really going to amount to anything. I want it to, though. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm digging yeah. the world. I'm, I'm like, okay, come on, it's, it's okay, but I'm, I just have a feeling it's just going to be. Oh no, these are just people that hang out and drink. Together. The Wolford ending. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's like, just to watch Kurt Russell's kid act, and that's, uh, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, and huh. and that's some of some of it. Like the other one, I, I guess I, I really loved was Succession because I'm a big Billions guy. Oh yeah, me too, me too. And, I was in there too. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so there are people in this room who like succession. Succession. Oh, succession. I, didn't watch it. I hate oh. succession. Oh, I was the oh, lone defender. Oh, succession oh. is just stellar. Oh, that that last episode, man! Uh, I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, I did not expect. I mean, you knew it was going to have that conflict does, somehow. That father so, son. Does Dwayne, somebody develop superpowers? Does does do they uh, all? No. Do you so want you him they, to spoil hey, wait, it, Randy? Well, you got, wait, <laughs> ironically, you yes. You guys are you're not you're not giving me any praise for not spoiling the ending. I just said the. The conflict <laughs> and the way the conflict came out, I didn't I actually, expect it to end that way. 
I actually was going to give you praise for that because I noticed and was very proud of you. Uh, but yeah. the thing is that Greg never spoiled things. He just doesn't have a problem with spoilers. Are we going to have this discussion? Is this, are you just trying no. to start a fight? No. No. He, well, no. He... I, I, no. I, I, no. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm off of that discussion. I just I just wanted some praise that I didn't do it. That's yes. All. You, I kind of want that argument again. <laughs> yeah. You're just mad that I started a fight no earlier. Argument. Spoilers are stupid. Uh, here. <laughs> Guys, I have a question. Uh, both of you guys did this show for a good chunk of time. Yeah. And during which you watched a lot of TV. More to, than I wanted to. Right, <laughs> to the point where it kind of became probably a little bit more like homework than yeah. uh, just regular leisurely TV watching. I'm mm-hmm. wondering, once you guys stopped, how was how your TV watching habit? Were you just like, I'm done for a bit? Grant, I mean, you, you're you not allowed to no. quit. I'll just, just start this just to right now. You can't quit no matter what their answer is. <laughs> I just, I see it <laughs> right there on the horizon. Grant's Wait. like, I, ha- I have this Amway meeting tomorrow because <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting a lot of oh, time God. watching TV shows Amway. that I could use I, more productively. <laughs> you know what? I actually became an old man, I guess I should say, and started watching like regular, like just. I mean, I still had the law. Fox, stuff. Fox News. I just started watching Fox News. <laughs> Moved to LA uh, and got all conservative. No, oh, I, these I, damn hippies. I only no, watch that, Central uh, commercials now. Be, if that actually happened. <laughs> but uh, no, actually, you know the show that I, I watch every day, and this is I don't I I'm sh- I, first of all I watch the local news still. Because when I moved here to really get to know L.A., actually you the best way to You have to watch The Car it, Chases by helicopter. Yeah, heli- well, that, yeah. You know what? That's strangely fascinating. It is, yeah. I mean, it really is. People jump off. They go to Long Beach. They jump off the pier. The cars just crash. It, it, it's, it's crazy. But I actually, you know what? I, I've been watching Jeopardy like every day. Oh, wow, that where, is an old oh. person thing. Did you get one of those chairs that lifts you out or whatever you have to? <laughs> <laughs> Up the stairs? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, no. did you get a, a stair chair? <laughs> now, it, it's, it's worse like than AP that. Bio? It's like, I think I'm going to try out. I think I'm going to take the t- I'm going to take the online test and try out and try to get on it. That's you'll never ever ever be able to form it in the phrase of a question. You'll you'll, <laughs> you'll just be like, no, I know the answer. And you'll just be like, no, Alex, you phrase it in the form of a question. Oh, man. It would be funny though. It I would want to see funny. that. But but really, I mean, I just I still watch TV probably at the clip. I mean, I may watch it later, like like Johnny was saying, like I'll I might binge more. Yeah. Um, and I haven't gotten rid of over the top or uh, uh, the cable yet, but I still, I mean, I'm really heavily still watching a lot of Netflix, but I've been watching a lot, I guess shows maybe that aren't as like, I really liked Grace and Frankie on Netflix, mm-hmm. um, because it was enjoyable. It's well acted. And part of me, I guess, is just that whole thing of like, you see people that you like to see act together and that ensemble, I mean, yeah, it's not like the deepest stories all the time, but that ensemble of all those actors of, um, you know, uh, Sam Waterston and um, Jane Fonda, uh, Lily Tomlin, and um, oh Martin my gosh, Sheen. Martin Sheen and Ernie. Martin Hudson. Sheen, thank you. Yeah, uh, just watching them all act together, I think it was really great. It's not a great show, but I binged it. You know, they blast with, with... that. I I'd watch the first season and then the second yeah. season. It was like, it was like the, it was the most overly well-lighted show ever like what? there would be no <laughs> wrinkle shadows on anybody's faces it was like they were lit from underneath from the sides from above constantly throughout. processing with Just, that app <laughs> it was like the all four uh, quarters of the screen were bright white no matter yeah even at night you know it was like God, yeah. they just really are blasting these ladies with yeah they should gauze win special on the effects lens. every year but uh <laughs> but but this acting is good and i just i like that so i mean and maybe there's some shows I've fallen out of. Like, I fell out of, like, um, You're the Worst. I stopped watching that. What? Uh, oh. uh, it got out of control for me. Love is, better, <laughs> love, love is better than You're the Worst. Love is way love, better than You're love the Worst. Love was so great. I loved love. I, I, I got to say, I don't know world. if it's coming back, but it sure finished strong. If no, that was, no, that that, was that, the end. That, that oh, was that was a really good ending. Right. I really yeah. – because that, I, was, that was a show that I'm like, oh, I hate these people. Oh, no, I'll give them a chance. Oh, I hate that guy. And then the <laughs> ending was like, wow, they really turned into human beings at the end. I really like I, that. Well, I like I, people that take emotional chances. Yes. Yeah. It, you know? Yeah, I'm, and then you're the worst just – I mean, they just it became so terrible and so cartoonish. I'm like, you know, I don't care about any of the characters, but love – 
you kind of went in like you'd have a, a like a bottle show of their each of, of each of their careers, which I thought was really cool, and how they brought that career into their relationship or the affection of the day you know, got into a relationship. I just thought it was more realistic. So. See, that's a good point. But Love had a terrible character named Randy, and so I can't watch it on that basis. <laughs> hey, we have, a, we, have a, we have a terrible character named Randy on our show. Do I know him? <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Uh, I, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not like we do. <laughs> we wish you got to know him a little bit better. Can I suggest yeah. journaling? <laughs> uh, okay, so guys... Um, you, you both know that what we're doing for this episode is that we wanted to kind of chart the shows that were the most stand standout of each year, starting in the year, uh, I think, is it 1999 or 2000? 1999. 1999. I'm, I'm looking now. at the wonderful spreadsheet now. Can, um, I, can, I, can I just jump in something first sure. real quick? I don't want to break your vibe there. No, no, that's, it's you, you asked what I've been up to. I, I just want to share... My David Lynch Peace Corps, my two years of David Lynch Peace Corps, where uh, I took Transcendental Meditation here, and I got a big discount from uh, for being a veteran through the David Lynch Foundation. Wasn't looking for that. And then I uh, got to see Christabel in a small concert with like 40 people and got to meet wow. her. And then I went to Los Angeles for the... the uh, Festival of Disruption that had Robert Plant and had the Angelo Badalamente Orchestra and Christabel. And I got to see Christabel in concert. Saw Mel Brooks and David Lynch. I mean, it was a fantastic thing. Christabel, not Kristen Bell. No, Krista. Krista Bell. She was, Bell. She was she in was Twin Peaks. She, she used to sing in Austin in yeah. his band, Eight and a Half Souvenirs. Yeah, but and now she's, she's uh, she was in uh, um, Twin Peaks The Return. She did, did you rub yeah, her like, feet, uh, Greg? Did, did you no, have no. a? <laughs> I, I definitely would. Yeah. Actually, no, we're she, she... actually we're kind of friends now. We're like email friends. Really? Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. We know who each other are, which is very cool. Like Krista, uh, when I first. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, John. Well, so then, uh, then the show came out. So then, you know, Twin Peaks: The Return came out, and it was just you know a fantastic experience watching that show i mean it was not, oh and, and in the meantime my daughter moved to bellingham washington so i went to uh the the diner the double r diner and to the the salish lodge the black lodge from uh twin peaks in person so there were and, and went to the falls all in the middle of all that too and then the show came out and i was really just really taken with how beautiful that was and then like Four or five months after the show was over, I went to Poland to an art museum, a lifetime retrospective of David Lynch's paintings. Holy and, shit, and, Johnny. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. that was like a two-year course. So whenever I, you know. Not it, a formal course, no, right? No, just, no. This was yeah. just how things Your, your own personal journey. Yeah, it was. It, yeah. it really was like my David Lynch transcendental me meditation follow the river, follow where it takes you kind of a thing. And what was cool about that that was that everything. ended that was <laughs> yeah. I, I got to spend a day in Berlin. And uh, I left. I was in Berlin when I was 26. And then I was in Berlin uh, when I was, what, 53. And it was so it was like uh, half of my – so the wall came down when I was 26, and then when I was 53 or 54, the wall had been down as long as it had been up. So it was like this strange, like, symbolism kind of thing that was like, oh, so the cold, as a Cold War child, you know, it was like, oh, the Berlin Wall kind of marked things, my army time. and You helped physically tear down that wall, <laughs> and then you helped, like, metaphorically tear down those emotional walls. Pretty much. I'm still working on that part. You and Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, we were talking – I was talking to somebody and they were like, yeah, I really wasn't crazy about that show. And I was like, yeah, I don't think you and I watched it from the same place. I don't – yeah, so <laughs> I kind of feel like I have a different angle that's on a, it. That's a pretty cool story, Johnny. But in the two years – the last two years, I've watched a lot of television <laughs> on my couch. <laughs> And that's pretty cool, too. <laughs> See, when he said uh, a David Lynch Peace Corps thing, I'm like, yeah. oh, so you like just sat on your couch and watched that? No. no. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny is cooler than everyone in this room. Well, and now we know. I'm not trying to say yeah. that. But, but you are. It's say. clear. Right. Well, that's I'm awesome. Just, if, if that's what the evidence presents. That's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's, that's, that's super cool. That's a, so that's a super the, interesting journey. Yeah. So I'm gonna, if, if there is a thing of like what was your favorite TV thing in the last few years, I'll have to say I'll have to go with Twin Peaks The Return. That was <laughs> Right, well, but have you I mean, seen? Like have you living, seen? Uh, that's the, cool. Have you seen the the Rob Schneider show on Netflix? Because that's, 
That's up there too, I think. It's called Real Rob. That's still a thing. <laughs> well, uh, no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> well, what, what about you, Greg? I mean, it's uh, well, a tricky question, but like, what would you say is the most? I don't know if we want to go all the way back from like 1999 to now because I think I'll know what your answer is there. <laughs> uh, but what, post what the say? wire. What would you say is like oh. one of the most impactful shows? Hmm. Of the past uh, decade. Okay, yeah. I want to, well, Mad Men, well, no, Mad Men's 07. But uh, I would say probably The Americans, uh, only because I don't know any show that, well, yeah, The Americans, probably out of all the other shows that weren't um, Mad Men or The Wire, uh, really just kind of hit a theme for me because of just my age, you know? I mean, I'm not that much younger than Johnny. And I remember the wall coming down and stuff and just the way it was the acting, you knew where it was, you knew the ending because you knew the wall was going to fall. And just seeing how those two characters uh, really transform, really mess up their kids <laughs> like in a terrible way and just, you know, trying to figure out how they were going to get out or if they got out. And then watching Stan Beeman uh, and that character and, and just the emotional ride he was taking the whole time. I, I just – in all the levels of – you have the international, um, the international spy stuff. You have the family stuff. You have um, just great acting, great – um, great writing, the music of that show. I mean, they use like the best '80s music. It wasn't like cheesy '80s music. They used like Peter Gabriel music correctly, and just it was perfect it, for me. It was like a perfect show. It's like probably like if Wire, Mad Men are like you know one A, one A, one A, and one A A, then the Wire, <laughs> and then uh, uh, the Americans might be like one B. Uh, so I would say that and. Um, and they, really, they didn't uh, justified too. Justified, you know, I love Justified, and uh, but Ju Justified, uh, the final few episodes of Justified, yeah. tied the whole series together so yeah. beautifully, yeah. like a lot like Love did, like because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Justified had a lot of ups and downs and, sure. and quality, but suddenly it became one big story with the way it was tied together. And, I, and I think Justified and, gets ignored a lot. I think Justified I think doesn't, so get a, doesn't get recognition. And, yeah. and I will say, I didn't take, take the journey that Johnny did with um, David Lynch, but with uh, Walton Goggins, I am drinking his liquor now because he's got a distillery out here in L.A. <laughs> so, which he makes really good gin, they make really good scotch, and they make really good vodka. And he, so, and he borrowed so all of your clothes for vice principals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, and he's like my and he's my dressing avatar. I love the way I've always loved the way he dressed. And I vice and I loved him in vice principals. Uh, so that's the closest thing I did. And then maybe like because of the L.A. thing, any show that shot in L.A. And also because now I, I, I'm walking down the streets, I'm like, oh, I know exactly where that is. Or like even stuff like um, it's a terrible show that um, uh, uh, Lethal no, no. Weapon, which the guy the guy from um, <laughs> Rectify got fired. Oh, oh Kyle, I, I yeah. was down in the uh, early episodes. I fell off towards <laughs> the end. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch. The only reason why I watched it because they filmed it right right down the street from my apartment. What? And so, we, so we were waiting. We were waiting to watch it. Like, oh yeah. They did that street. They superposed this. No, they weren't doing that. So a lot of the structuring of like what I love about living in L.A. is that a lot of the TV structures, you get to really see that and really feel that. I've got friends who are actors. I've got friends who are uh, work on the production side as grips or whatever. So I really get to see that and I feel that and I really uh, like just love that whole thing vibe i mean even yeah, yeah. emery's are a terrible show i mean they're gonna i'm not even sure this week's gonna be but it's still pretty cool because i'm like oh yeah i know exactly where they're filming them they're not what that about, far from where i live maybe i'll go to the red car but i don't know you get kind of tied up into that stuff what about uh, barry is cool barry is, oh, barry. Uh, is such oh. an la show barry and goliath are like they're, they're, oh i know exactly where they are there you know like well, that, those it, it, two shows are, are – and I've only visited L.A. But yep. if you just drive around L.A. a little while, you'll be like, oh, that's where Ever Carradine got run over in right. Goliath. You know, and like so, it, it's so, so – The funny thing about Barry is that Helene actually did an acting class because, they, you know, they give free acting class. You go and you kind of see and they want you to sign up. So she went and did it. And is Henry Winkler the teacher? Back. Yeah, I'm like, right? <laughs> yeah. With Henry so Winkler? She, she, and it was just – she's like, it's just like that. It was just really weird. You know, got all these weird people, all these people doing stuff, doing weird stuff. And you have one act – you know, the coach who 
who's trying to size them up, but they're really trying to sell you stuff. And is it, he was, she was like, it was exactly like that. I'm like, Oh, that's kind of cool. So, but yeah, we, you know, we definitely got into Barry. So, and Bosch, which is another show that, I mean, I like Titus Welliver, you know, but I love that show. Of course, it's got some wire alums in it. So of course I love it. Uh, but the way it shot like the last season with the uh, angel flight, which is literally a mile from where I live and, you know, I've gone on it. It's like, okay, I can get, you know, I get into the show. So, um, I don't know. I mean, say the same shows I've liked have continued on, you know, a few new ones, obviously, like, you know, Johnny mentioned Barry, uh, you know, stuff like, uh, the night manager, I guess came out, um, which I really love. Oh, love night manager too. Yeah. What is Berlin? That? Berlin uh, station. It's got Tom oh. Hiddleston. Oh, well, and he's yeah, like yeah. kind of. I know what you're talking about. He's sexy oh, and he's not being a hotel. hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not being Hank Williams. <laughs> he's, he's making yeah. a run at James Bond. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no. that's an AMC thing, right? Yeah, you yeah. worry. That and uh, there's a show Counterpart uh, on um, Stars because again, oh, yeah. no, yeah. Counter, yeah, Counterparts on Stars with um, J.K. Uh, Simmons. J.K. Simmons, which is and it's really cool. It does the espionage thing in Germany again? And I don't know why Germany is like a big like international thing now because like berlin station's really good in germany and then you obviously have deutschland 83 <gasps> deutschland oh. 88 is coming is 86. coming back 86, 86. is 86 is coming soon 86. yeah so i'm oh, like man. into that you know i I'm still so like the man in the high castle so it's just like i don't know some you German know that uh johnny and i lived in germany at the same time at the I same believe. time well, yeah. we both yeah, might have mad ages, cow though. disease <laughs> 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 this is why we can't donate blood we can't donate yeah. blood because we might have mad cow disease yeah. Yeah. Oh my so God. uh <laughs> top that la guy so it's, <laughs> so it's it's cool that you guys both lived in germany but i don't know if you know this but i've read a lot of comic books <laughs> yeah yeah and you but sit I, on your couch and watch tv but i have the there. box set of hogan's heroes <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let, let's do uh, one last question before we end this segment. And mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you guys, um, what is what is the greatest show of all time? <laughs> why? why? I know Twilight Zone. That. It'll always be the Twilight Zone for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. It'll always, because, I mean, it covers every base. You know, like, it's it does the very best at what it did. And you can watch The Twilight Zone when you're a kid and go, oh, this episode's so scary. And then you watch the same episode when you're 20 and go, oh, wow, this is a whole different show than I remembered. <laughs> it's a different type and, of scary. And then you watch, yeah, and then you watch it, you know, in, in midlife and you're like, oh, it was all in that dude's head. You know, like everything <laughs> about it. It's just so skillfully, beautifully done. Yeah. And, and, you know, the writers were all great writers. And, and the legacy of that show. It's yeah. got so many other imitators yeah. and spinoffs. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's, 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 you know, it was the blueprint for for not just for anthology and, and weirdness, but for, you know, high-minded drama and, and science fiction and, now, you know. Now, right. that first, now that the first episode was The Kid with the Phone. In the pool and stuff. In the Twilight Zone. Yeah. No, the, the first was, like was the one action. with. No, the first. Twilight... They didn't have cell phones back then, Greg. <laughs> no, 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 they no, didn't no. Have kids, like, they didn't let no, kids be on TV then. No, um, the first episode was uh, "Where Is Everybody" with Earl Holloman. Okay. Because uh, there was a one with the books that and the glasses. Me out. No, that's Burgess Meredith and uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, "Time Enough at Last." That's the only one I remember. I know, but that's a great one too. Even that one is like, dude, but, you know you. You but could have the stood one up with the yourself. kid on the phone who was trying to call somebody, but they were dead, and they yeah, found yeah. something. Th- that was that. I always thought that was just riveting TV. I'm like, they actually put this on. Who? who this is like the most <laughs> depressing thing I've seen in, ever, and is still. And this is like 50 years old. And then you watch uh, those arc and sharp objects. Like, nope, never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, see, it, it, see, Twilight Zone laid the groundwork for just you know. <laughs> Misanthropes, I so I suppose. Well, but well, uh, well of Greg, course, what, what's your show? <laughs> we know what well, Greg's show is. Let's I mean, hear it. Let's on. hear it, Greg. It's, 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 of course, it's the hear. wire. <laughs> I mean, every year, especially, and yes. you know, I have to praise us because we have not talked about um, politics at all, uh, in, like the last twenty minutes or so. But oh, we've circled he, around it. <laughs> yeah, circled, circled around it. But like, you I know, said something about Hogan's yeah. heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's relevant again. <laughs> Scarily relevant again. <laughs> Very yeah, much so. but I mean, all the stuff that Simon was writing about about systems breaking down are just they're they're constantly breaking down, and he was right, and a lot of the vision of the show still holds up today, which is terrible, but it is, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I don't know, it's just it's still 
I still go back and watch it. I, I go back and watch it because it's kind of like reading, you know, that you have books you read every year. Or you have like you have touchstones, like if touchstone works of art. Right. Yeah. So you have like the records you like to listen to that make that put you like that ground you. The wire grounds me, you know, and ever since I started teaching, especially season four, just like, oh, my God, my, this is my life is terrible, you know, um, and uh, and then I, I'll put, I have to put Mad Men right up to it because yeah. I actually uh, AT&T, I have Uverse. They have this channel called. You still have cable? Before. Yeah, Greg, I told no. you I still have it. Cut the His favorite show is The Wire. He ain't I cutting that shit. I still have cable. <laughs> you can't watch I Jeff the Wire. can't cut The Wire. <laughs> Guys. But, oh, We're boy, done. That, there that, you go. There you joke. go. <laughs> that was a good it. joke. <laughs> but, uh, but audience is an at t channel show. They, they've been running Mad Men. So I've been re-watching Mad Men. And, I'm, and I, then you just realize, man, this show – just the internal battles of what, of what all these characters are going on. And especially when you see what they've done since. And, you know, actually when you just looking at, looking at Elizabeth Moss and just her transformation with Peggy and what she did with that character straight, uh, obviously into the, um, what's the show she did in Australia? That show was good. And then uh, obviously Top the, the uh, Lake? Handmaid's Tale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah you, I mean, you, just seeing her, and seeing where she went with it is that I mean she will like you when you go back and watch Mad Men you realize it really was about Peggy and her growth. I mean, obviously you know. Um, no, it was about Don. <laughs> well, no, but but, but when about, you go back uh, and really Coca-Cola. watch like they just had season five on you know when they when they ended up getting um uh, they end up doing that uh, when. They did end up doing the hiring thing where they end up hiring black people by mistake, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, um, or, or, was, or was that season six? Anyway, but and then that scene with her in the apartment with when she brought the um, the black secretary to the apartment and they had the whole thing about the purse and this that, you know, and she, her constant battle of trying to assert herself, but then but with that underlining of like, am I doing the right thing? Do do I want kids? Do I want to, you know, do I want to marry, you know, do I want marriage? You know, all that stuff with her career and the way Don would treat her and then her just like saying, I don't need this shit anymore. I mean, that is just really wonderful to go back and watch. So yeah, I mean, it's the wire of Mad Men. That's one of the best shows. I mean, the correct answer, the correct answer was big bang theory. (laughs) I mean, I, I appreciate your passion there. It's just, well, uh, I was really, I, you, you know, missed I the was mark. really sad that that's, the Roseanne reboot didn't really last that long. That's um, a that's a three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, well, what about what about your favorite? Oh, we're going to get into that in the next uh, hour and a half of this show. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> we got yeah. more. We got more podcasting to do, but we are going to move into our first break before oh. we start charting through the decades. And uh, Greg. This was fun. We got to have you back on. Yeah, I mean, this is a good time for me. This is... uh... Well, he didn't mean like right now. Right, guys we are back and you know what we're gonna do a top 20 list and randy why don't you explain to us how this all evolved okay so we started talking about our 200th episode and we're like what we should do and one of the ideas we came up was doing some kind of top 20 or top 50 or whatever and so grant sent a list of here's my 45 shows yeah. i did send 45 and yeah, i don't and know why 50 was never mentioned like we were talking about chipping in 10 or 20 shows each i think and then like grant just like i have 45 kyle made the joke <laughs> that we should do the top 200 and I think that might have been when the 45 came Okay, from. that might have been. But there are four of us, so the math doesn't that. work. Yeah. So Grant well, just isn't great at math, I guess. Where, where did 45 come from? Uh, I tried to do 50, but then uh, I, I started walking out of the house as I was doing the list. And <laughs> I went, uh, I'm not going to think of another five more. So I just sent it where it was. And, and so then Kyle said his 45, and at that point, the challenge was done. Was I had thing. to do it. Yeah. Guys, you know what we have here? It's a lazy 200. The lazy 200, yeah. <laughs> this does not at all explain why we have a 20 and a top of the year. Oh, no, we're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> so then I took that, and Kyle put all that into a spreadsheet, 
And then I took that and added votes so we all had whatever one we voted for. And then based on that, I made us like a top 15 based on who had liked – who all? What shows all four of us had voted but for? I feel like at some point we decided that that list was terrible, though. That was yes. After that, that list was terrible. After all of this work, because we all used the same Google. Yeah, that, that list was terrible. <laughs> and so then I went through the entire list we had and found the years they had had. I went did some Wikipedia work, found the years they'd premiered, and put that list together. And we picked a top twenty one show for each year, and that shows a much more representative list. You know. Normally, to any normal person, I would apologize for such labor that one would have to do. Except for that, I know you're a fucking weirdo who loves this. I shit. fucking love doing yeah, it. Yeah, if anything, I feel like we underbaked this whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Randy is the type of person who goes to Disneyland and coordinates for, like, a year and a half beforehand with, like, every single minute what he's going to do. A hundred percent, yes. He knows all the exits and how to get there the slowest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, making lists is my thing. I'm all about it. So, yeah, this was great for me. Super ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so, okay, we're going to run through this list, and we're going to start sort of arbitrarily at the year 1999. So we've put Grant in charge. <laughs> We're going to talk about the shows. He's going to tell us what show it is. We're going to talk about it. And then when he's decided he's done with us talking, he's going to say, I believe Rob was the code word we decided upon. Rob, based on real Rob. Based on real mm -hmm. Rob. Yeah. Uh, so when he well, says Rob. Rob gets real, then shit's, yeah. You when, know. He says, when he says Rob, we immediately have to stop. And then Grant's going to say what the, other two, what the alternates were. Just like say it. Right. And then we'll move on to the next show. Right. Uh, and, and I forgot to actually say who's actually on mic right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, in addition to me and Randy, uh, Kyle's back on Not for back. this segment. And Les has joined us. Hello. Les. Also, we have we have studio audience. We do have that a might, studio audience. That might audience. sub in on mics as we go on. Uh, they will definitely pop back in at some point, and it might be random. We're just going <laughs> to uh, have people like, hey, come on in and talk about this. So, yeah. hey, hey, guys, on couch, if we end up happening upon a show that you're passionate about and want to talk about, you can raise your hand, and uh, one of these two gentlemen on this side of the table will <laughs> have to jump up. Yep. Tap on the shoulder will work. Let's, yeah. let's not do it ridiculously. This is not... <laughs> It's not the fucking hokey pokey or whatever. Oh, but that does bring up one more thing. You guys have no idea how close you were to having like a drinking episode, fucked up episode, because Kyle threw like three or four different things, and he's like, 200th episode, how about a drinking game? 200th episode, how about if we do it randomly? I'll admit, none of my ideas were good. I've been trying <laughs> to find a good idea. All I've had are bad ideas. There is a, there is sitting in front of me a bottle of uh, Dr. McGillicuddy's intense vanilla schnapps. Because you said you don't like the peppermint. <laughs> and uh, Mohawk creme de cacao and creme de menthe, along with four shot glasses. Right. Uh, so I don't know what Kyle thought was going to happen here, but we're all getting girl drink drunk. I just wanted to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it's the all right. slumber party ever. <laughs> <laughs> so we're starting in the year 1999, and this is roughly based around uh, the dawn of the new golden age of television. Yeah. Although... Uh, I feel like uh, Sopranos is not, is not actually on this list. It's got to be in there somewhere. It's on the alt. But you technically just said it, so it was mentioned. <laughs> I'm looking. No, I do not see Sopranos <laughs> anywhere on this list. Now, <laughs> or Oz. Now or... Some, no, some things we found as, as Randy started assigning the years to them, yeah. uh, some of these shows ran multiple years, were going off of the year that they started yeah. on. Did the Sopranos begin uh, in the 90s? No, no. It, it began somewhere in here, and it was it was one of the alts and one of the various versions of this list that we made. Sure? But it might have been I year like 2000, was, uh, actually. 99 or 2000. Yeah. Year 2000, uh, year 2000 has no alts. Anyway, right. Sopranos, well, you know, Sopranos and a better alt. job maybe be on the list. So, Sopranos and alt. All right, let's go with 1999, guys. And uh, the show chosen for 1999 is Space. What do you think about Space, Grant? You you know i never seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Spaced is the show from Edgar Wright, uh, Nick Frost, and Simon Pegg. The they, guys, they never went on to do anything they else. They never right? wanted to do anything yeah. else. Before we had the epic community paintball uh, episode, we had an epic spaced paintball episode. Yep. Uh, the uh, Yeah, no, this show was fantastic. The, the finger guns uh, thing they did, oh. that was great. It's It's a sitcom that... That set about to use everything down to the camera tricks to make every joke work. Same thing that Edgar Wright yeah. does in his movies. Yeah. But spaced episodes take like movie genre themes and run with them mm -hmm. in, in an exceptional way. Uh, one of my favorite things that came about in the hashtag that was going around Twitter of uh, Share Your Rejections yeah. was Edgar Wright talking about going for a commercial where the the call sheet for the job said, we want to shoot a spaced style commercial. <laughs> and he went for the gig and didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Simon Pegg plays a guy who who runs a comic shop. Uh, he's a he's the manager along just him and Bilbo, 
and uh, mm-hmm. he's a, he's also a comic book artist who wants to get at what it is the British Marvel comics basically. He's got his roommate Daisy, who's a, a wannabe writer who mostly just lives on the dole under various names. They got a, a drug dealer uh, buddy named Tires. Uh, there's a uh, and his buddy Nick Frost is a guy who got kicked out of the army for stealing a tank and driving it down the street. Oh, we've mm. all been there. Yep. It's <laughs> it was a two season show. It's a British show, so there's like ten episodes total. It's really funny. It's Wasn't got that great the music. Plot of stripes. Uh, yeah, no, they stole an RV. <laughs> Actually, the, they stole? the yeah, plot of the show of is they were roommates, but they were in a special housing situation where they had to be married. So they were pretending to be yeah, married yeah. so they didn't get yeah. kicked out of their apartment. Yeah. Peg and Nick Frost? No, no. Peg uh, and, uh, <laughs> but, the actual yeah, the girls, that would have been a fun show, though. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't because they made a movie about that, and uh, I think it was uh, <laughs> the Paul Blart dude <laughs> in that movie. No, Space, Chuck and Leary. Yeah. Space is, yeah. is a great show, and uh, it's weird to start our top twenty with like a British show. It was on like the BBC, I think, <laughs> or Channel Four, uh, but it was that good. Yeah. Fucking dirty limeys. What were our alts? <laughs> yeah, give uh, us the alts. Oh, Rob. Oh, wait, I missed the cue. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, our alts were the uh, Freaks and Geeks came out this year, West Wing, and The Daily Show. Now, all pale in comparison to you space. You wrote Daily Show, but I'm not sure if you meant yeah. The Daily Show with Craig Kilborn. You mean The Daily Show with John Stewart. <laughs> the Daily the... Show with Craig Kilborn had been out since the mid-90s. Correct. The Daily Show with John Stewart started in 99. Okay. So, well, wait, it, it started the... in 99? Yes, the it did. Wow. Show. It was the same show, a soft reboot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was not the same show. No more five questions, a little bit of John Stewart. Uh, <laughs> I was bummed in top five. Yeah. All right, Martin. Hey, uh, quick question about the top five. Um when they they had the head like split apart, yeah, was that from Ricky O? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the year two thousand. In the year two thousand, <laughs> curb your enthusiasm. Yes. You know what? Best part about this show, the music. Yes, it is. It's in my <laughs> head right now. HBO uh, put up a uh, right after the HBO logo fades in and out. What's the first music you hear? And I was like, Kirby Enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> womp, womp, <Yeah>. womp. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. This one, I mean, it's a mostly improvised. They like they set up the situation, and then they mostly improvise their way through it. It's got, a, I mean, Larry David, who there's very much the DNA of Seinfeld if Seinfeld were on HBO in this. Uh, it's dirtier. It's it's even more about the minutia of daily life. And then he's got just a great supporting cast. Yeah, the the brilliance of uh, Curb is that all these situations, they're like the thing where when it happens to you, it's all you can focus on. But other people just don't care about <laughs> your mundane personal shit. Yeah. But then you watch this show and you care about his mundane. It reminds you of your mundane shit that you want everybody else to care about. Also, there's enough Jeff Garland, so there's plenty of yelling. It's had, I mean, I, I would say, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh. Jeff Garland. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that I was, was like, a prop. <laughs> what? <laughs> a bra sniffing dog? A bra sniffing dog? <laughs> Larry. <clears throat> now I feel better. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I found that this show has, has was pretty strong for the first like six seasons. Which who could ask for better than that? Sure. Yeah, it took them like twenty years to do six seasons, right? And then uh, recently, it seems almost like. Half of them are kind of like half the episodes each season are kind of phoned in. I'm like, oh, these are okay. I agree. And then there's some that are like really punched up and great. Yeah. On the other hand, the the show got better when they had a JB Smoove. Uh, Martin uh, Martin Thomas from Double Toasted is here, and it seems like he has some thoughts about this that uh, he wants to disagree. Well, I would fully agree with Randy. Where if you thought the show was kind of treading water, mm-hmm. once JB Smooth came on, that whole season with the blacks changed oh, everything. Because <laughs> that was that was a great ep- that was a great season to have Vivica Fox. It was the last maybe only great performance she ever gave was as his wife, where she yelled down Susie Essman and then brought in JB Smooth, who stuck around after the rest of the blacks family left. And the episode with Michael J. Fox is the one oh, that I think about over and over again. Am I about to be Michael J. Fucked up? Michael, I'm about to be Michael J. Fucked up, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing made me laugh harder than that. And then J.B. Smooth came to town and performed at Cap City Comedy, where I got to see him perform live after that. And that cemented me... He cemented him for me as my favorite character of the series. So as long as he's I on, I fully it, agree with that. He's my favorite character of uh, him and Susie Essman. Yes, I, I love the both of them. Yeah, yeah. and in the last season or so, where it, yeah, it wasn't as strong as it was, but at the same time, 
I still really enjoyed it, and it felt like a gift because it was like, okay, every season it seems like you know, the last few it seemed like, okay, Larry's done. He's he said all he has to say. He's all but said that. Oh, but then he got divorced, <laughs> and he had new things to say. Yeah, <laughs> and so it felt like a gift to me. Right, right. I, I loved it. Also, Ted Danson. Also, Ted Danson. <laughs> Ted Danson's a dick on that show. <laughs> uh, they all are. That's the thing about that. Well, the, well, the beauty of that show is it's it, it builds itself as if oh, Larry's the the asshole and everybody else is normal. And the more you watch it, you go like, no, I side with him. <laughs> I mean, half he, the he, time. Ha- he has points. He Sometimes has- he's. He's just way off the deep end, though. I, Come I, on. I honestly, see, it makes me feel bad that you say that because those times when I know they're supposed to make me feel like he's off the deep end. Oh, no. I'm like, <laughs> no, no. I, I agree with him more than them. <laughs> Martin so, is yelling for society. <laughs> so so maybe I'm the asshole. <laughs> but, more, but more often than not, I agree with him. And I get frustrated that they won't at least admit that, okay, he has some kind of point here. They can't. You can't no, give no. a mouse a cookie on no, that show. No, no, no. no. <laughs> especially, especially, especially Super Dave is always going saying, oh, "No, Larry, you're wrong." And I'm like, "No, no, he's got a point." Okay, he, that he's, was he's more right than you. My, my most favorite Muppet impersonation of, of Super, <laughs> Super Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, Larry. Mm. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, for the year 2000, there are no alternates, but I did look up Sopranos, and it started in January of 1999. Oh, okay. So yeah, no, the alternate for 2000 is the show Ed, which gave the world Justin Long and the Warren Cheswick experience. What the fuck? You have Ed on there? Yeah. Ed was great for the first year, great. and then oh, really, wait. really terrible. I was thinking Ed TV. Was, oh, yeah. You <laughs> oh, know what? No. You know what? I was, too. <laughs> Just I was like, why are you mentioning that? <laughs> oh, Ed that had the uh, professor from The Flash yes, on it. Yes, yes. Right. And yeah. Julie Bowen from Modern Family. There yes. were a lot of good people in that. Mike Lee and Black. Yeah, yeah, no. Ed, Why are we talking Michael about Ed? Ian God Black? damn it. It was year 2000. <laughs> people looked upon Ed very favorably. <laughs> but, but, but 99, was that was the golden year. That's like, a, like, like, that Matrix was, and that was, Fight that, Club. And... Oh, oh don't, don't get me started. Matrix, Flight, uh, Fight Club, Toy Story 2, it was just being John Malkovich. Angry Dudes. Uh, the, uh, the Iron Giant. A, 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 a American Beauty, and I'm glad he's here because when I was talking about how all these great movies came out, it was Johnny Neal himself who pointed out that as we were going into Millennium, all those movies were about identity crisis because it's like as we hit 2000. Who are we? What are we about? It was Crisis on Infinite Identity. I just <laughs> figured we were dumping all our movies because it was all going to end at 2000. Yeah, like get all the good movies out because right? this is it. Oh, yeah. No, I had a friend and he was from Dallas, had moved to uh, Kansas. We went to visit him. He's living in Overland Park, Kansas. And he takes me downstairs into his basement and he's got giant vats of water. And, oh, no. And <laughs> Run. And, and firearms. And he's not a gun guy. He had firearms and everything. Uh, apparently, of, he was a gun guy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well because, of, because of the scare of Y2K. <laughs> and, and I was talking about this earlier because there's this talk about the people in North Carolina, some of them who aren't evacuating. I even – my wife has cousins there. I say, like, how are they doing? And she says, oh, they're not worried because they're only in the flood wind plane and not the rest of it. I was like, um – that's pretty bad. <laughs> had they, had, did they not see Harvey? But but I get it. Harvey, Harvey the movie Harvey Milk. <laughs> what, were there were there hurricane things in that movie? I I haven't seen it. Nor, nor giant rabbits. Yeah. But but the thing is, you guys know from living in Austin, what drama queens are, where the men are. They're always ta- preaching doom and gloom. They're practically on the streets on street corners with signs that say the end is nigh. And yet, sure, it gets all pumped up, and then nothing happens. And if you hear interviews with people, but I, I, I take area, their side versus uh, when the insurance doesn't kick in. For me. <laughs> sure, sure, because you go like, "Oh, do you guys not see what happened to Houston or Puerto Rico?" Yeah, right. But 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 if you hear them interviewed, they're like, "Yeah, they tell us that every year, and nothing happens." <laughs> oh. um, man, I don't. no 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 no, you're, you're saying that now. But there was all this talk like, oh, man, the storm's going to it's going to camp out there. And even now they're starting to downgrade it. No. So who's right? Who's wrong? Rob is. Rob is. Rob is. Rob. Okay. <laughs> Rob. All right. Uh, we're moving on to 2001, guys. <laughs> Uh, six feet under is the the winner of two thousand. 2000- oh, 
Oh, sorry. That's my favorite show. Martin, get out of here. <laughs> no, no. Come and you know, and come you know, on. Take this seat. And you know what? I've, you ne- know, I've seen, okay, uh, never seen Six Feet Under? All right. This is chaos on Mike's here. Uh, sorry. Martin, you're back here for two the uh, for Six Feet Under. Yeah. My, 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 my two favorite shows in the world are Six Feet Under and The Shield. And you know what? Um, Six Feet Under is – it has one of the few – Moments on television or in film that I've ever cried about something and just absolutely sobbed. Oh yeah, w- w- which one was it for you? It was the finale. Yeah, oh, yeah. that finale. I mean, I even watched the uh, burial of the wife no, no, scene we... and like nothing. Grant's lack of a soul is is a known fact. Like, <laughs> yeah, you you don't cry at shit. I don't, but that Sia song at the end and yeah. driving and the 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 montage Sia. sequence. Sia, is, I don't know. It's Sia. Um, See as she was driving a Kia. <laughs> see in the Kia. That's yeah. the hair she can't see. That's how I remember. Uh, Going to visit her Tia. Her Tia Leone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Ga- I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm to really mute your mics Randy. real quick. I'm just, uh, <laughs> just got to turn those mics off, and uh, we're good to go. Rob. Uh, yeah, but uh, this show is surprisingly really dark. It's got a, a dark humor to it as well. But it's it's just a bleak show, and um, I I binge through this one. I don't oh. take I don't take the show as bleak. It has bleak moments, but it's about life. Yeah, yeah, well, it's more a than beautiful show. more yeah. than any other show. It's about life and everything that goes with it, and how sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes it's really dark or sometimes it's really fucked up. I found it dwelled a lot more in the fucked up and the the heavy parts of life than like. Well, it was filmed in a funeral home. Yeah, if you worked at a funeral home, you yeah. would see those parts. Yeah. But this wasn't always, always sunny in Philadelphia, yeah. kicking back and drinking and, and having party games. No, <laughs> but there was a lot of people. That's a grief. darker show. Actually. I would say that it's oh, always yeah. sunny is a darker show. Like none of them are having <laughs> oh, fun. They're all and nihilists. Yeah. And, yeah, and they don't even know that they're nihilists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least <laughs> in, uh, in Six Feet Under, so you got to watch David try to find himself and find love, and you got to watch like all the different uh, Peter, characters. What was the older brother? Uh, uh, Nate. Nate. Yeah. Nate. Yeah. 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 Because you come into it with Nate as okay, he's the healthy one who begrudges coming back to his fucked up family, and the longer it goes on, midway through, you go like. No, wait, Nate's the fucked Nate's up one. Nate's really yeah. fucked Why up. Why doesn't Freddie Rodriguez own this funeral home yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I spent so much of that show waiting for... And it's that point where David and... Uh, God, I forgot, I forgot his, his, uh, his husband's name. And I uh, had it a second ago. Is it ago. the cop that... Yeah, the yeah. cop. Uh, but they, they were the healthiest couple throughout the series. Yeah. Yeah, big time. And there were... I, you know what I think of a lot in that show is when they were having the, the picnic... Uh, in the park, and his mother got stung by a bee and died. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. It was just so, like, oh, that's how it happens sometimes. You know, because most of the other deaths, there were always there was always some kind of dark irony to them. Mm-hmm. You know, like sticking your head up through well, like a limo every window. show oh, yeah. opened with or, some. Or a golf yeah. ball hitting you in the head while you're, you know. But that one was just, everybody's having a good time, and a fucking bee stings her. And everybody just watches her die. And it's like, and then the fam, and then suddenly... David is the strong one in that couple, yeah. you know, because yeah. her, her, his husband was you know, was was it Keith? Keith? Keith, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was just man. You know, remembering the characters' names, yeah, on that yeah. show that's impressive. And and it was like, well, here, let me help you. I know how to help you now. Yeah, and that was a that was a big deal. I'll I point thought. out this is seventeen years ago. I know, but it 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 was it made a big impact on me uh, because all- I I watched it only because I read the write up on it and I thought this sounds interesting. I want to see this show. Remember how quirky it started too? It was very yeah. quirky, and it seemed like it was all about the dad, the who, dad. who died, and then they and whatever dro- his secret was. They dropped the quirkiness. I mean, he stuck around yeah. as a as a ghost, sure, kinda like in Dexter. But, sure. <laughs> but yeah. I really thought it was going to be about Nate figuring out his dad's secret life and the uh, the new the apartment that he found, and his dad smoked weed, and uh-huh. I thought it was going to be about some secret about his dad. Yeah. And it's not. It's about the family. Well, it's very real life in that. Okay, yeah, we found that out, but. There's more that's going well, on with and, all of us, and that there was less to it that he had an apartment. He yes. just had an apartment, had to, an go, apartment. to go hang out in. Yeah, yeah just, just to not get away from everything. Yeah, it, at it his wasn't house, some huge secret. It was yeah. just he <laughs> had a little apartment that he would just go and be in. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, that's the greatest thing in the world. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> who wouldn't want to have their own little place? Somewhere? And I remember how my stomach dropped when Nate was in the hospital, and it showed his death. And it faded, and then it came back with him, like the the doctors bringing him back to life. Oh uh, yeah. And, and then you had that whole season where his wife was missing, and it was like, is he going to find her? Is he not? 
And all through that, you go through it back and forth, and you find out she was killed by somebody he knew. Where it's like, Nate, you're just being crazy. You're being obsessed. And it's like, no, he was right. He, yeah. Yeah. It was fucked. Oh, yeah. It was, it was uh, and there was something about him having to come to terms with the fact that he wasn't better than everybody. Yes. And yes, there, that was a there, big thing. <laughs> everything that was a about, huge it thing was, about it. He just thought he, he was thought so he was so much, much better than, than everybody, everybody else. else. He was the one who was cool. Yeah. He 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 uh you know he had moved that away whole thing about I went to a Francisco. funeral in Bali and, yeah. and you know and, and uh it sounds kind of cool. It like was better than them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was. And the fact that he buried his wife out in the desert, I- illegal oh, or my not. Oh, God, that was great. It was great. Pretty yeah. boss move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it really was. It was a really like he honored her wishes. Uh huh. And yeah. So this was year 2001. Our alternates were Scrubs and uh, 9 11. <laughs> okay, maybe that was, <laughs> that's right, the look, one. And, as a mini event, either. that was like a two-week thing on my TV, and as a was, oh no, it's still going on. It's still, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, we still don't know who we're mad at. Uh, uh, all, and and right, the identity crisis has been solved. We figured out who we are. We're horrible. We're people. horrible people. Yes, yeah, we're that's warmongering. The, that's the thing. Horrible I, I, people. Yeah, I look back at nine eleven, and I look at at Trump being president, and everything that's come since then, and I go like, man. Osama bin Laden, he's not here to appreciate it, but he totally fucking won. Yeah, we oh. no longer have an identity <laughs> crisis. We have other people's identity crisis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he he definitely Fear of did the what other. terrorism is supposed to <laughs> yeah. do. It's supposed to destroy a country from within itself. Within itself, yeah. He did it. He, he did it. it he pulled it off. Yeah. You know, bravo. Well, onward uh, on on that note to the year two thousand two. All right, uh, can't believe we didn't talk about home movies in two thousand one. Oh my god! The you show know what? that gave us Coach McGurk. I can't do that show because I, you know, while, while we're being uh, bleak, I went over to a dude's house one time uh, back when I was working at a movie theater, and he, he had that show on. I was like, oh, I've never seen this before, and he's like, yeah, let's let's sit and watch this a little bit. It's a great show. And then he took his dick out. <laughs> Metaphorically, <laughs> the dude showed me a Faces of Death book that he had oh, on his shit. coffee table of like Jack the Ripper and like horror photo things. I, my my innocent mind had never seen such things, and so now I forever associate home movies with <laughs> a Faces of Death book, and I can't watch that. Dude, show. Brendan like, is probably cool with that. That show represents just. Dead bodies. <laughs> By the way, can I once again call out Les for sneaking in all his favorites as we go down? <laughs> He's doing a good two, job. Two for two. Yes. <laughs> I'm more impressed that he has favorites that we didn't mention in the algorithm. I'm not. Les clearly watch more TV than years. all the TV dudes combined. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Kyle and Randy are back in. Um, <laughs> hello. Uh, yeah, 2002. Uh, we're talking about The Wire. This is a, a show that popped up on HBO. Do and, people like uh, this show? Uh, it was kind of small when it came out. Yeah. It was actually it, it, like no one was watching it. I mean, no one watched it. The, David Simon talked about this at, at ATX. He's like, I don't know why they keep putting us on. We, nobody watches our show. And, and then critics all just raved about it. Yeah. And uh, then us uh, amateur critics, we were like, Yeah, that's good. I came onto it late. I, I know it was year two or year three before I started watching The Wire, and it was because of people going, Dude, if you watched this. I didn't watch it until it had been over for several years. You know what somebody did to me? They did the same thing. They go, dude, have you watched this? And I'm like, no. And they're like, you got to take my box set. He didn't give me the first two discs. Oh, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, it's cool. You'll get into it. No, I did not no. get into it starting on disc three. No, my dude, God. I blame that guy for why I didn't get into the wire. To be fair, though, I had to watch like four or five episodes before I was even kind of interested. That's already yeah. a show that I have to preface to people of like, hey, so this is the most realistic cop thing I think I've ever seen because it's infuriating and their cases don't go anywhere and nobody really goes to jail for that long and like, you're gonna have to watch like four episodes before you realize that all their evidence is just gonna fade away and they're not gonna win this case and like, right. that's like looking at the work schedule and yeah. saying i'm on for thursday and like <laughs> realizing like shit i'm not selling this well at all yeah like, yeah like people are like why would i watch like I, it's really compelling but it's also incredibly frustrating it's, yeah it's hilarious yeah. how everyone goes this is one of the best shows on television and now right. I'm going to have to apologize for a whole bunch of things about yeah. it before you watch it. <laughs> like, watching them put away Avon Barksdale and then watching, like, a season later him show back up because yeah. they didn't really put him away for yeah, that. Yeah, that's how it works. Thing. Like, yeah. what, what did we actually get him on? So, eh. I'm, I'm curious. Everybody's favorite season of The Wire? Uh, fourth, right? Ha- Hamsterdam. Fourth. Yeah. Fourth? Like Dexter, right? Yeah. Did they have the strong <laughs> four? we have this discussion Trinity? about fourth seasons or all <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Fourth season, fourth season of of, uh, of the wire is the best. Okay. Well, good. what's interesting about this is our alternates are 
Firefly. Oh, that was tough. Not Andy Richter saves the universe. <laughs> God damn it, Les. Every, oh, that was this. Okay. I do, lo- I do love that show. Um, and The Shield, which uh-huh. is arguably the other greatest cop yeah. show ever on television. Yeah, I've The Shield and the Wire. episode of The Shield. The Sh- well, that's crazy. The Shield and the Wire being up against each other is interesting. And the thing is, big, big a fan is I watched The Shield from episode one, and I love that show. I'd still give it to The Wire. Do you uh, think that you, you watched Ozark, right? Yep. Okay, take a season of Ozark and condense it n- into each episode of The Shield. That's what The, <laughs> That's shield, the shield is. Shield. It just goes, oh, I'm so tense, I can't handle this. <laughs> but but oh, should they work things out? But it has oh! a sense of humor. It has a sense of humor that Ozark doesn't have. Um, yeah, it does. There was funny shit. There There's was darkly Walton funny Goggins. shit. There's Walton Goggins. There was darkly funny shit in every episode of, uh, of The Shield. Often Vic doing things, often how dumb criminals were. Uh, let's move on to the year 2003. Keen Eddie. What? what? Was that 2002? <laughs> no, that's three. Okay, 2003. <laughs> Key and Eddie was there. No one watched that, and they shouldn't. Um, Arrested Development. I've seen it twice. <laughs> oh, shit. Everyone's seen Key and Eddie. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but what are we really We are talking, talking about Arrested Development. <laughs> this was our choice show. for 2003. Yeah. A show that really kind of did a new approach to comedy in yeah. that taking an ensemble cast. Doing a single camera operation and then making every single second layered with like five or six jokes going yeah. on all simultaneously. Lots of time it is jumps. So dense and and so meta and like they not only build jokes on jokes, but they they take jokes and do a setup one episode and then wait like five episodes and do a payoff on that. Yeah, Thirty Rock yeah. picked up on this kind of thing too. But but Arrested Development takes it even further. It's yeah. not just dense jokes in the show. The previously on Arrested Development and next yeah. time on Arrested Development, none never of that happened. shit ever happened. Never happened. Like it, it, they're just setups for jokes that they didn't have time to. To finish out, it's like they took yeah. everything at the end of the day of the writer's room and just still filmed it. And Ron Howard as narrator just cannot oh, be overestimated man. how important that was to, to make that show work. I and feel also, bad about how he, long he was the identity of the show. Yeah. We also uh, should say that the show went downhill fast when Netflix picked it up. Uh, I, I didn't like the third season when it was on uh, cable. I thought the really? first two seasons were fantastic. I, I liked it okay. But the third yeah. season was a little bit weak in comparison. It gets just William yeah. hung in there, and yeah, I'm I'm call me judge. I'm judge Ryan the recut. Thing. I, I, I enjoyed the recut of the Netflix, the first Netflix season. Yeah. Uh, that they did. I thought that was a smarter move, but it's still weird that they didn't just do that in the first place. <laughs> Part of that uh, that season was just Mr. F. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. F. <laughs> I wonder that if they so good. I'm pi- sorry. Pitch it to the actors that way, like come back and we'll give you your own episode. Like I don't know, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what happened, but it, but it's definitely. And I tried watching the new season, and I couldn't get into it. Oh yeah, I never watched. I mean, it. part of it is because we learned a lot yeah. of the people are terrible. Actually, I'll, terrible. I'll be real. That that <laughs> season came out right after that article, and I was like, yeah. nah, I'm gonna wait a minute. Yeah, it was bad timing. It was bad timing. <laughs> uh, our alt w- for this, which you know, this is a tough competitor. Chappelle show. Yeah, also came out this year. Man, Chappelle and, and, show was such a good. And that only lasted uh, two seasons or three. Two, and then they did a third season that he was sort of semi involved in. Ah. Yeah, uh, short lived, and what a, a legacy that one! And also brilliant, left. so funny. Yeah, yeah. the the spin off comedy shows that have been able to that are constantly searching to try and capture what he did. I mean, Key and Peele seems like the most obvious successor. But uh, I'm going to say something controversial. I like Key and Peele better than Chappelle Show. Uh, I noticed that you actually put it uh, somewhere on this list. <laughs> I did. I'm not. I'm not less. I put it on the actual you list. I'm the, not just uh... sneak it in every year. <laughs> did you read the article he wrote about uh, Key and Peele? Like he didn't really dog the show, I, but I, he was like, yeah, he was kind of. Like, if it wasn't them, it like, would have been somebody my else. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, like Comedy Central had the formula; they were yeah. going to do it with whoever. I mean, I I get where he's coming from, but I think Key and Peele have proven themselves to be pretty original voices. Oh yeah, so. for sure. All right, 2004 guys, uh, the the show's lost. The lost. <laughs> it's the best show ever. Rob, and, well, Rob, since we lost Rob. this one, I was going to slot in Method in Red. <laughs> <laughs> Method in Red? You were not. Yeah. I didn't even know they had a show. One season. Uh, Yeah, it was a very brief live show. Uh, So we're going to be talking about (laughs) Lost for uh, the rest of the episode, actually. So I I hope you guys kind of uh, get yourself comfortable here. Yeah, okay. We get it. It's There's there's polar bears. There's time travel. Yeah, Penny's got a boat. Yeah, Penny's got a boat. It's not Penny's boat, but it is Penny's boat. It's not Penny's Uh, boat? It's What the fuck, Randy? (laughs) Uh, It's not Purgatory, but it is Purgatory. This was the last great drama on Uh, network television. Flashbacks. Uh, I say it. 
Can I can I slip something one. in before we get too losty? Like with the past couple of years, I feel like this is a very important time in TV because this kind of marks when like that uh, distribution of full season DVDs was becoming more prolific. Yeah, and it's almost like the beginning of like kind of binging TV as we know it today. No, Lost. I agree. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. it started with TV The Wire, and then uh, what, we talked about Chappelle Show last right. year. Like these are, I remember these as like uh, some of the first DVD box sets that I was purchasing and getting yeah. rent. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty big time in TV, and yeah. of course, Lost. Like they made a shitload off of selling that on. Yeah, DVD. no, you, you're not wrong. Lost was one of those first shows that you actually you had to have seen every other episode. I mean, Lost definitely was capitalizing uh-huh. on on what. Like shows like Twin Peaks had like paved the way of like sure. doing um, uh, allowing fan theories to kind of build a, a cult behind it, but it also really enriched um, doing uh, side media, doing ARGs on the yeah. side, and like really like threading a bunch of theory stuff like within other aspects beyond the show. I got yeah. to see those people, uh, so people who work for Bad Robot, who yeah. worked on like the, uh, what do Lost they call experience. it? The trans media marketing. So like mm-hmm. all that side stuff. Like the people who actually wrote that. And it's so fascinating to be like, wow, there's like marketing teams who continue the story after the writers and, quit and doing it. this is it. so much more commonplace with so many shows now. And it, it was mm-hmm. really like trailblazed by Lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. The, it, it, it is, like you said, it is one of the, maybe the last great network drama, but I bet Les has an alternate suggestion. Oh, no, no. I already said it, uh, <laughs> it in red. <laughs> uh, our, our other alt was Deadwood for this one. So. Uh, that's, that, and there was no way that was going to fly with Grant leading this podcast. If I was like, Deadwood was the show, that was not going to happen. No, Deadwood does not get to be above Lost. <laughs> <laughs> no one puts Lost in the corner. <laughs> uh, we're just going to move on. Deadwood's wait, 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 wait. Can, what? Lost with Grant. <laughs> uh, heart flutter. <laughs> I might be drinking too much. I don't know what that is. Um, number uh, year 2005. We are at It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. This actually won our, our top pick here. Of course, because the show's been on for like 13 years. And it it's should still not great. still be good at it's all. St- and it started again this week, and it's great. <laughs> well, j- just so we take a quick look at the alternates. Yeah. Uh, the Office. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Colbert? The Colbert Report? Colbert Report started, started that year. That year. Yep. Dang. Uh, why would that be on the list, though? I'm so annoyed by the Colbert I think Report. I put it on Colbert I do not like the what? idea of, of satirizing the right because I think it empowers the right. You I don't like so? it. Interesting. Yeah, I, did, I, I, I wasn't actually able to I watch feel Colbert like he was, You piped down over there. He was a tool of that side. I, and I, I think that it just gave credence to it in a way that the, the satirization didn't, wasn't as effective as, as the rehashing of the talking point. You know also what? took viewership away from Kitchen Confidential that year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to side with less on this because Kitchen Confidential is legit great, and amazing. everyone should buy that DVD. And but, Doctor Who also uh, rebooted. Yeah, Doctor Who reboot. Oh. So I do want to agree with you on Col- Colbert because I actually really love Colbert at the time, and we all it's on there because like three of us voted for it. That's oh, why I, it's on I'm there. Well, and the thing is, Colbert. what he what he did with that character is like so many people ripped that off after him and have done it in a bunch of different ways. Yeah, like I mean, that, he wasn't the first our person did. You're right. <laughs> no, there's seriously. no in between. Like I I often wonder like is this joke like. It, Honestly, Colbert's the same way I felt about Star Trek Discovery, of like that it's awesome and everyone should watch it. No, uh, <laughs> like you've you've made an entire show out of the mirror universe, which technically I guess means you are still making a, a good Star Trek show. <laughs> but what it's really done is give you seven episodes of non Star Trek characters doing non Star Trek character things. <laughs> uh, and I don't think that audiences at home get the joke. I think they watch it and go, oh, yeah, so the Federation is a bunch of dicks. I kind of felt that way in my heart. So like, I, I love both Star Trek Discovery and the Colbert Report, but only one of them contributed to the Trump presidency, and I think Grant's right about that. Well, I <laughs> don't Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I totally cried on the season finale of Colbert Report. Aw. Oh, yeah, big time. It's I, one of those like few I TV moments where you're like, he got me. He got me good. <laughs> uh all right, well, I think that covers It's Always Sunny. Moving on to, 2000... <laughs> <laughs> on to 2006. Uh, 30 Rock was chosen Yep, mm. by Randy. <laughs> no, you all voted, and I put my finger on the screen. 30 Rock's friggin' amazing. Yeah. And also, I just finished a rewatch of it, and that is one of the most it holds up. Yeah, it's one so of the most funny. rewatchable comedies for me. And it starts off weak, but it gets stronger as it goes along. Yeah, almost and it's got every an amazing episode cast. all of it. It's got great callbacks. It's super funny. Eh. <laughs> I always thought it was just like, okay. I don't know. I, I wasn't watching this week to week. It was not a show that I was like really invested in, in the characters and the drama. Well, which one of the alts would you have voted for? Uh, 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 
Sunset yep. Strip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Studio, Studio 60. 60 on Sunset well, No one, not even Aaron Sorkin would vote for Studio 60. <laughs> uh, of, the, of the alts, uh, Friday Night Lights easily would have been my pick. Yeah. IT uh. Crowd is also on there. Oh! But so, Friday Night Lights. That's my jam. Mm, so I have, to ad- I have to admit. Uh, like I said, I put my thumb on the scale because I just rewatched and I love Thirty Rock and of, of the and Friday Night Lights has season two and you got to admit that drags it down. Sure, but Thirty Rock has like season like three, four, seven. All right, <laughs> all but, of that is too long. We're, we got to you got to get these down to the real pure good shows. There was a thing called The Lost Room that year with Peter <laughs> Krause. It ran three episodes. <laughs> Sci-Fi didn't pick it up for a series. It was better than all that shit. Uh, but I do want to say about the IT Crowd. I watched the first episode of the IT Crowd last week. Oh my god! For real? So, yeah. So now I have to go through and watch the rest. It's of I've literally watched that win. season like six, seven times. It's just yeah. constant rotation. It's, it's, I, I finally, it all I finally the time. started that, and I finally started Peep Show. So. Also, it has the best. That's part of another one. Yeah. What's that? It has the best part of Disenchantment. Matt Berry shows up on IT. Oh. oh, okay. If it did nothing, it gave the world Matt Berry. Well, Snuffbox gave it Matt Berry, yeah, but, but it's it, where I found. That's where more Matt Berry. Okay. Yeah. Snuffbox is good. Yeah. We got two thousand and. Seven. Andy Barker, P.I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Wait, 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 before we get into 2007. Where are you reaching for these? Real quick, the last two years, you know what we've reached? What's that? 30 Rock and Always Sunny. Uh, this is Hulu binging we're getting into now. That's so this true. is like the streaming is starting and our television habits are, uh, ah. once again, they're adapting and yep. evolving. Also, uh, 2007 is when at least I started first started podcasting. Wow! What? Yeah. <gasps> so uh, with Martin Thomas here, Martin, back uh, when it involved Apple products, and Martin, uh, that's when I first met the guy, and uh, he he was doing a podcast, and I said, "Oh, I don't know what that nerdy thing is, but uh, can I go ahead and uh, hang out with you guys and <laughs> be one of those not a person who's on a podcast, just a person hanging out there in the back room?" And I was like, "I'm going to be on this one day. I'm going to take it over." <laughs> So that probably means I met it you. It did in like, not happen, but I, I did make my own spinoff. So. I think I probably met you in 2008. Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 2007, Mad Men was yeah, Ooh. the show of choice. Uh, alternates, Pushing Daisies, Chuck, and Flight of the Concords. I love all those shows, but oh. Mad Men is like prestige TV. And, and, those are all and pushing John daisies. from Cincinnati should probably be on there. I love, <laughs> oh, okay. I love John from Cincinnati. I've seen that. Are you kidding times. me? Yeah, all that of it. Like, yeah, the, I've seen all of it. That's like the arrival of TV shows. Okay. And I'm talking about the original arrival, not the cool new one. Do you actually know what was going on in that show? Uh, now he, that you've seen it multiple times? He explains times? it all at the start. What's going well, on? Is he There's Jesus? a scene in the middle. Don't let him explain, John. Cut court this court off. Where John cut him off. says everybody's plots to each other. It's in like the first episode. What? It just Stop. He's going gonna to make us yeah. watch it. This is Rob, a trick. Rob. I've seen him do it before. <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> it is a trick. Don't watch that. <laughs> so, uh, Mad Men, that was a show. Was yeah, a- Mad Men was, we, was a great show. It was so, all right. I guess we can move the on. The opening of Mad Men is the slickest thing that I think I'd ever yeah, seen oh, on TV shit. at that time, right? Oh, yeah. Right? It looks yeah. so good. The end credits of Mad Men look like they were made on uh, like an early 90s AV club end credit <laughs> thing. <laughs> like, it totally looks like the BBC from 84 threw up Mad uh, Matt Warner's or Warner's name at the end of that thing, or, or Matthew Weiner, whatever his name was. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like I don't understand how they had the coolest intro thing, and then every week I'd watch Mad Men, and it would end, and I'd go, "What cheap bullshit is this? Like <laughs> this that is looks gonna, like way our high school did announcements." This is going to sound so pretentious, but like in the height of Mad Men, I was interning at an advertising agency, and I was just like, <laughs> it was the coolest shit to like come in and know what happened on Mad Men and harass and, like, all the women. Yeah, well, I wouldn't harass the women. <laughs> Whoa. And drink and smoke, I'd be harassing all the people who could give me a job. I'd be <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you see what happened last week? But yeah, no, that was like my in with everybody there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that Ad Men loved Mad Men. <laughs> they also tried to make a reality <laughs> TV show that was like oh, the real Mad Men. I got your pun. That just sounds like a like a. Me too to catch a predator. It was awful. <laughs> yeah, they did one season like, on AMC set up in, a, in an office, and <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's all it was. It's like, oh shit, we gotta do it tomorrow. I guess we gotta stay late. All right, here we did it. There it is. A pr- here's your Pringles ad. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, 2008 was the year of Breaking Bad. Yeah. And this one easily took the top spot. And you know what? There's no alternates on this year. But I also might point out that this was the year of the writer's strike. This was the year of the show that I did a whole season podcast about. 
The Middleman? Middleman, 2008. Ah. Yep. Was, was that one also cut short by the writer's strike? Uh, no, it aired on ABC Family and, uh, and uh, was not cut short. It was cut short by cancellation. <laughs> yeah, it was cut short by, by cancellation. <laughs> they voluntarily cut it short it when was... they realized they were going to be canceled and said, can we just do 12 episodes instead of 13? <laughs> uh, Breaking Bad debuted to seven episodes in its first season. Because of the writer's strike. And... It was a high octane fuel fest. Did you know you what? Just, what? I don't know. Uh, you know, whatever they used to announce on AMC about this show. Go ahead. Go Here's ahead. what's interesting about the seven episode thing. So, one of the big complaints we had about, uh, particularly the Netflix Marvel shows, is less episodes. And yeah. we see this with a lot of TV now, where they're cutting down. They're kind of going to that British model of less less episodes, and uh, it's more effective. Fewer. Fewer, <laughs> fewer episodes. Fewer a, episodes, says, yeah, says yeah, the sorry, grammarist sorry. in the back. <laughs> no, 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 he's right, you're right. So they have less episodes, and it's... <laughs> 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 no, 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 I'm really wondering if this model, like, if by just a uh, happenstance, you know, they kind of like tapped into something where it's like, no, we gotta, we gotta blow our load quicker. We gotta get it all in there. I'm not sure that's the expression. I'm either. pretty sure that's the expression they use. <laughs> but in what, everybody that's, knows what that's that, that means. Got a lot of people in the trouble. Sorry, I'll explain it. So, like, you blow <laughs> no, your load. No, no, explaining no, no, it's wait, not making Rob, the meeting go better. Oh, All right, guys, we are back. And you know what? I looked at how long we were doing uh, each segment last time. We got to speed it up. We got to speed it up a lot. So uh, I pulled out the cocaine wine. Cocaine we're wine. We're going to take a sip of this. And we're it's gonna, mostly cocaine. We're, we're going speed round here. We are jumping back in in the year 2009 with Parks and Rec. I would also like to point out the, that the alts were Party Down, Better Off Ted, Community, and The League. That's a really good year for comedy. No shit. One of the reasons I didn't get into Parks and Rec at first is because Adam Scott had already gone on the show, and I was like, fuck, they wrecked par- uh, Party Down That's for me. That's true. I they wrecked yeah. Party Down. I stand yeah. by my assertion that the reason you didn't get into it is because it didn't start in 2009. It was terrible that year, and it started the next year in 2010. It's season two <laughs> of Parks and Rec. And that is fair. Season one is not great. If you've never seen it before and you're binging it on Netflix, I definitely suggest start with season two and watch season one at the very end. Yeah, as a as a an app, it's as actually kind of cool. Like once you fall in love with the show and you go back, you're like, wow, this you is watch, weird. You watch like a prequel and you're like, oh, that's still better than Star Wars. Instead prequels. for your yeah. uh, <laughs> instead for your 2009 comedy, you can watch Better Off Ted. Dude, that was already on the <laughs> alt. Yes. I can't believe my alt's on the on the real alt list. <laughs> that one's a fantastic. Or the unusuals. One. Uh, all right, we're gonna jump over to uh, 2010. And uh, the favorite show was Louie and the TV Dudes. <laughs> I actually now, put was on the my favorite list show Louie, or Louis did Louie just not... lock the door and make you watch it? Louie is not the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The favorite show uh, was Sherlock. Yeah. What? I actually that... didn't. <laughs> What's the favorite show? It's, it's Terriers. Show... Damn Thank it. you. God. It's the same just... year that uh, Glory Days came out. <laughs> well, one season. By the way, Meadows College. No, nobody the, else watched that. The way you, the way you know that that I'm the one who made this list is the Terriers is the, is the one that won this year. <laughs> but it's better than the other ones. Well, Louis had to go and masturbate his way out of uh, the the top spot. He here. didn't have to. He chose to. Uh, fair, fair, fair. Point. Also, I didn't put Louis on my list. I put Louis. Quotation marks. Is this cool, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Which Louis? Is this Lucky Louis or is this Louis Louis? Oh, Lucky Louis was. Uh, I like also, ru- also ruined with the, with the weird cardboard sets and yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. Always be climbing. You know your ABCs. Always be climbing. <laughs> uh, okay, I didn't laugh at that. Um, yeah, <laughs> Terriers. Uh, if you want to know our thoughts, BeachCopDetectives.com. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead to <laughs> 2011 Game of Thrones. Perceive yeah. interest. <laughs> That is not our alt, actually. No. Black Mirror is our, our alt here. But uh, yeah. Game of Thrones came out and revolutionized TV. It, it brought genre to the high art. Yes, I had never once considered that you could set a show in medieval times and that there would be stories that involved wizards. I mean, who fucking thinks this shit up? Like, <laughs> hey, somebody, somebody wizard tap in dragons? for less. Who thinks to- of dragons? <laughs> you have to have RR in the middle of your name. What if people died? I would never considered that. <laughs> It shows some respect. It's dragons and boobs. Yeah. No, but for real, though, y'all have watched this. Is it good? 
<laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's good. Yeah, bro. Although, the first season does look a little Ren Faire. Uh, uh, if you go back and watch the first season compared to the later ones, it is... It's it like it's I, HBO learned budgeting later on. It's I a just thought it was weird it's that uh, I just thought it was weird that Sarah Connor ended up like time thrown back. <laughs> she got well, thrown back in time and uh, it became really oh really mean. Gosh. Yeah, if one of the really dragons was the, the Sarah Connor Chronicle oh. Outlander mashup. That's a show I'd watch. <laughs> I think we we talk every single episode about that show. Yes, so, we do, and everyone knows about that one. 2012. We are making great time now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Key and Peele. You know what is? Why is high maintenance an alternate? I feel like that's Hell one yeah. that like oh, yeah. Les might try and drop in. It's because Les and Kyle put their thumbs on the scale. Yes. That's my jam. That the show s- is pushing the pot genre. That show is fucking <laughs> fabulous. Every single episode They're, is perfect. I yeah. love it. Their thumbs on the scale with the use to count because it's not about marijuana. Right? It's not about the guy. It's about it's the a scenarios. Beam scale. Yeah, like. It's really interesting. I don't know if you give it a chance. If you can kind of, I gave it a chance the, twice. It's also the same year as uh, Don't Trust the Bee. Oh shit, that's good. <laughs> uh, Pushing Daisies never even made the list. Wait, Pushing it was Daisies an alt. Was it. it was an alt. It was an alt. Is it? Yeah. It was an alt for one of those good years. Yeah, you oh, skipped it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was on there. Yeah, Pushing Daisies was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was an alt for Mad Men. <laughs> you guys remember that show, Pushing Daisies? Yeah, Firefly was, show. was back was in 02. Didn't make the list either. Are we going to jump around now, Grant? <laughs> Wait, this is going to speed things <laughs> this up? This is my 10 minutes on high maintenance. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, what was the show so, for this year? So the I'm guy lost. gets his bike locked up, and he has to ride around with the Zuber driver, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Look. Key and Peele. Little, little thing Peele. on MTV called I Just Want My Pants Back. <laughs> what? Y- y'all didn't watch that? No. No one I watched that. I Just Want My Pants Back? That yeah, was good. Can we get twenty seconds on what the hell that show is? <laughs> <sighs> I don't. I don't. I don't know if we can. Uh, I don't That's know if we can get that back episode. for the audience at home. Johnny Neal has just yelled from the rafters. <laughs> is that Louie? <laughs> <laughs> Twenty thirteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we are going to need uh, Jonathan. Hey, we have special guests in the audience. Uh, it, it wasn't Martin and Johnny. We have special guests. <laughs> uh, yeah, half to Michael, who uh, you might recognize from our listener question from segment. our question segment. Yeah, I just uh, graduated. Y- Yathan, <laughs> welcome to the TV Dudes Studio. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Dude, and, um, yeah, you want to introduce our 2013 show? Uh, uh, mm, <clears throat> Rick and Morty. Yes, <laughs> Rick and Morty. So, uh, Adult Swim cartoon yeah a little gem i don't know if you guys have heard about it <laughs> szechuan sauce and such uh, you know what i think of every time i watch rick and morty house of cosby's <laughs> <laughs> you do because i think you've mentioned it a few times <laughs> oh my god because i saw, i'm like where do i know this guy from like i've seen this before house of cosby's man look it up uh, now what um was House of Cosby is a different show before uh, Hannibal Burris and all the Cosby stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Long before. Yeah. <laughs> because this is when Cosby could still sue people for besperching his name. Ah. <laughs> He's kind of lost that legal right now. It's kind of weird saying that uh, you have Dan Harmon reeling in someone because Justin Roiland on his own, like, like House of Co- Cosby and uh, crap, uh, the uh, the Doc and Marty short like he's oh, just shit. completely insane. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. and he's just filthy to the point where I'm like, oh, they actually allowed that guy to have a show. It is There's weird. hope for everyone. It is weird when Dan Harmon is the restraining influence. So Dan <laughs> Harmon is the one going. I don't know about that one, guys. That is weird. <laughs> That's a weird role for him. But but talk about what great chemistry it is between yeah. those two. That. That Royland can have this just completely unhinged ADD uh, comedic insight, and then and then Harmon can just kind of come back in and be like, "Okay, here is how we will actually take whatever you're adding and uh, <laughs> whatever you're doing in this equation, whatever crazy, and you we'll we'll with. actually add plot and add heart yeah. to it." And he, it's a, a great chemistry. It's it's a full on phenomenon too, yeah. and world building. I mean, yeah. just it's it's really pushing that, like because it doesn't take the world building too seriously. But then you take a step back, and it's like, oh my gosh, they've got a lot here to work with, and they constantly pull on stuff from like previous seasons, and it's and it's great to watch. Also, such great restrained fans. Uh. Just, just <laughs> the fans of Rick and Morty are just the best. I did think it was kind of. <laughs> 
I did think it was kind of weird when they did all that free promotion for McDonald's. I mean, they sold a lot of McNuggets for no reason at all, for a joke. <laughs> oh, not even nuggets. They forced those uh, chicken tenders in. I was actually in line when they ran out of Szechuan sauce in one of the calmer <laughs> locations, and they were like, okay, uh, we can give you like this lame-ass sauce and maybe a... Uh... Wait, was it Rick? <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is like a whole cool thing. Uh, they pretty much forced McDonald's... They didn't force them, but they gave McDonald's an awesome opportunity to get people to line up around McDonald's to oh, buy geez, Szechuan Rick, sauce. Oh, jeez, Rick, we're teriyaki sauce. I don't know what we're going to do. Is line around the block, Rick. <laughs> Oh, okay, we're going to go into an alternate dimension, but if we steal from them, then they're going to lose it for their says one day. Fuck that dimension, Rick! <laughs> I cannot do a Rick impersonation, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, Not enough beer. Uh, burp, burp. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you guys had me do uh, a Jeff Garland. Yeah. I can do a Jeff Garland. <laughs> Jeff Garland, Morty? 2014. <laughs> no. uh, Fargo pops up onto the scene. And uh, it it brings to us uh, what was the showrunner's name? Oh, Noah Hawley. Noah Hawley, genius auteur. Noah Hawley. Yeah, he, he's pretty good. He's pretty great. Yeah, um, our alts for this were last week tonight and Silicon Valley. Man, this is really like Damn. yeah is the dividing line of we're getting to some really recent shows that are still running. By the way, Fargo, I still am astounded. <laughs> there was there was no way that show should have been good. Like, yeah. adapting a classic Coen Brothers movie into TV, there's no way it should have been good, let alone great. And it's great, and it's been great. And the first season's the best, I mean, but don't it's you, good as it goes on. But don't I, you have to assume anyone who would want to try and take on adapting Coen Brothers to TV would be someone who's probably really good at doing such no, a thing? No, I would think some coked-up producer who's like, I can do better than that. That's what I would think. <laughs> and shockingly, he did. I would definitely say season one is better than the movie. I know I'm going to be crucified for that. But... Whoa! Wow, that is bold. I don't... I don't know if you'll be crucified by this guy next to you. <laughs> no, I don't know that I can entirely disagree with him because the movie's a classic, but, man, that first season just plays out stories beautifully. Martin Freeman's amazing mm. in it. Oh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. You know, one of the underrated <laughs> Martin Martin is behind you guys just going, huh? What? So, so that's why I'm sweating. I'm feeling his death glares. <laughs> he, he just seems so baffled by this assessment. I mean, it's no <laughs> indecent exposure or whatever. There. Um, well, no, like Lewin Davis. It's Lewin Davis. Lewin Davis. <laughs> what's uh, what's their uh, cr- cruel intentions? No cruel intentions. No right? intolerable cruelty. No. Intolerable cruelty. Cruel intentions is a terrible Sarah Michelle Gellar movie. You know what? That was one of the first R-rated movies I tried to get into. Yeah, I, that's what I was saying. Is it wasn't terrible if you were thirteen. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. I did not actually manage to get into it. Yeah, yeah. And um, the I, I actually gave my money to uh, a buddy of mine, his his older brother, only to find out his older brother was younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't know. Guys. Um, all right, moving on. N- numbers uh, 20, 2015 I, There's the numbers on the side here. Uh, Better Call Saul yes. came out in twenty fifteen. Yeah, uh, it makes sense that if we chose Breaking Bad, that uh, Better Call Saul would also manage to be on the list here. And oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I have to be the last. So I Zombie. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, that actually is Les too, because Les and I both love iZombie, and it's I, on the alts. iZombie's on the alts as well as Master of None and Sense Eight. So, oh yeah. shit, yeah, Sense Eight's great. Man, Master of None is also fucking fantastic. It is, but mm. I'm a little the Aziz Ansari thing, man. I don't know if he's on the outs too. Not quite, Louis. Dude, but... the Aziz Ansari thing does not even belong as a thing. Okay, Wait, all right. You mean that article that launched that girl's career? I mean, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't have trouble watching Master of None. I just feel a little guilty not having trouble watching it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, Better Call Saul though. I love it. Every Better Call Saul's fantastic. Every single week. Wait a second. Did Human Giant not make this list? No, this that definitely did not make list? this list. Dang, it's not even on the less alts list. No, guys. <laughs> Damn. Uh, no, nope. He, wait, Human Giant. Yeah, the uh, sketch comedy show with that did Aziz not come Ansari. out at the same year as Master of None. That came out like a decade ago. Yeah, years ago. I challenge you. No, it did come out this year. All right. Let me just uh, do a Put quick Put your computer down. I am while... right. <laughs> <laughs> we just okay. looked it up, and Kyle is right. Fine. 2016. <laughs> Kyle fucked with my computer. Does not want me looking this up. Fair enough. 
Uh, Better Call Saul is one that we talk about every single week. Yeah. But, Jonathan, you're here. Uh, what did you think? I'm actually shocked at how much I love Better Call Saul because in any other prequel that just goes explaining almost every aspect of the show or movie or whatever in excruciating detail just seems annoying to me. But seeing how we get uh, Jimmy to actually become close to a cell and actually having Mike and Gus meet up and then them actually working with the Salamancas and actually seeing Hector having his his uh, his attack to actually have the, the stroke and eventually we're going to see him be written, bedridden or at least wheelchair bound. And even in this current season, we're actually going through seeing how the super lap's being made and that just surprises me that I'm still into it. And this is season four. Season four of Breaking Bad had crazy stuff like the wheelchair bomb and, and skeleton... Uh, uh, Gus, right at the end, like there's a lot more pulpy stuff that people really clung on to with Breaking Bad, but Better Call Saul just has those quiet moments that you guys keep talking about. That is absolutely true. Like, fuck yeah, man. Yep. Yeah. You, I got to comment on something you just said, which is Origin of the Super Lab. Are we slipping into Better Saul, Better Call Saul for this week? Uh, you, you, yeah, we can talk about a it a little bit. bit. Yeah. Okay, so in, in this week's episode, uh, they start kind of getting into the guys who dig the hole for the Super Lab. And I really feel like the creators of the show have made a comment on TV in general, where at the beginning of the episode, you have a guy who comes out and he's got his laptop, he's got this like digital measuring device, and he walks around and he's like, oh yeah, you know, this, that, we dug a hole, a hole for the cartel, and you know, we could do this in six months, you know. And then Mike's just like, no, nah, we're good. And you're left the rest of the show going, well, what, what, the, what was the point of that? And at the end, somebody comes in and goes, actually, this is ridiculous. Like, nobody would ever dig a hole under a laundromat. What the hell are you thinking? You know, do you know what you'd have to do? Yada, yada. And it's almost like the creator said, no, TV always does this. They just give it to you easy. Oh, we dug a hole under it. No, you can't just dig a hole. And they could probably make a whole season of the show about these guys who are going to dig this hole. They be- want to be meticulous about exactly. the process. You know, HGTV should have gotten in on that and done the How to Make a Super Lab show. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I just love how they take what what is even seemingly the most mundane scene. Yeah. Uh, and they make it interesting. N- not just the cinematography, but uh, the pacing of it. The the weird twist, the, the take that they will do on showing process. Yeah. yeah. The, the show is just fucking brilliant. Yeah, it is. And just so engrossing. Um, okay. We are now on to 2016. We only got a couple more years left here, guys. The Good Place uh, is our winner. So, Grant, you were you were skeptical of this. You were like, I don't know. I didn't been on long enough, right? Weren't you, weren't you saying that? Uh, sort of. I, I mean, I, I thought like, oh, it's weird for us to kind of put these best of shows on that are still ongoing. Yeah. But this was earlier on when I thought we had our our top twenty just of all time recommendations. Yeah. When you kind of structure it in this way, when we get to these okay. these close of years, we have to have shows that are right. ongoing. It's also weird to do best of the century when we're like uh, we got like eighty more years, but <laughs> best of the millennium. <laughs> but my I'm pretty sure, yeah, nine hundred eighty more years. But I'm pretty sure there aren't going to be any more good TV shows after that. So I feel confident saying these twenty shows will be the best shows. Uh, well, 30 if you count all of Les's extra picks. The Speaking good of place. that, <laughs> Happen Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love the Happen Leonard books, and I could not get into the show. This show needs to be better. The show needs Isn't to be it better. Canceled? Uh, the show this show's better. fine. It's just <laughs> James. Purple. <laughs> Pure <laughs> uh, Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, alternates w- for The Good Place were also uh, Stranger Things and Atlanta. Oh, and, man, shit. it's like yeah. a really yeah. fucking That's a hard call. But, yeah. but for me, I can make that call in a heartbeat. A good Place is, well, is something different. Because they're not scared to, d- to entirely blow up the concept of their show <laughs> yeah. in a single episode. So, yeah, the blow through a season's worth of show in one episode. It's crazy. I mean, when, who does that? I mean, to say, like, you know, to, to try and say that Atlanta mm-hmm. or Stranger Things aren't different, I think those oh, yeah, sure. are oh, yeah. also, like, wildly unique shows. But what, what I would say is fascinating about the good places it is doing what is yet again another network comedy right yeah, yeah. but it has taken the network comedy and it has added rich plot it has added um a a, a complete like like redesign world building and then it's done pacing at such an incredible speed right it, it's always trying to outpace what the audience is anticipating well they, they said it, on, successfully on the good place podcast they talked about the fact that they've built a mystery box show without anybody knowing it was a mystery box show 
Right. They were, and that's the thing. They managed to build a show that we didn't know what it was until the end of the first season, and it's good. As it was. Without the twist, it's still a really good show. I mean, Stranger Things, we, we've had other shows that have been kind of doing homage to other sure. uh, shows that have kind of trailblazed before it. I, th- I think that Stranger Things has done it stronger yeah. than anyone else has ever attempted. And they've been able to fuse um, John Carpenter and Stephen King. Oh, yeah. And it's all fantastic. This, like, yeah. And the same world. Arpeggio synthesizers. They did big stuff for arpeggio synthesizers. <laughs> and Teen Koontz. Let's not forget about it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and Atlanta is phenomenal TV and experimental and groundbreaking and just really, really good. But the reason I would give it to The Good Place slightly is, again, they're doing it on network TV. <laughs> it is. It is well, crazy that that's a degree. Of, that's a degree of difficulty. They're also talking about a really touchy subject with the people who watch network TV, which is heaven and hell. Yeah, and it's something you really have to respect to even you know attempt that. Also, they're doing. They're talking about philosophy and ethics and and you know and teaching lessons. It's funny as hell. Actually, some people may think of it as actually a Netflix series because not much people actually watched it when it was first airing the first season on NBC. Well, I think also it's kind of. Hi, it's Johnny Neal here. Johnny Neal's here. I, I think it's also kind of got that My Name is Earl where you find somebody who's going, you know what? I want to be a better person. I genuinely do, but I don't know how. And I think a lot of us can find ourselves relating to that in a lot of ways, not all the time and not about everything. Right. But I think that's a pretty good hook, you know, to see somebody that wants to be a better person. And and it's it's easy to support that. And as much as I love Atlanta – there's just not enough of it. It's, you know, two seasons is only about five hours of TV when you put both seasons together. But there's only two seasons seasons of The Good Place. Yeah, but they're longer seasons. But, but, no, uh, no uh, actually, well, by looking at the running time, because it's 13 uh, half-hour episodes, you could say it's equivalent running time. And I the, fe- the difference is the pacing, though. Like, Atlanta sure. will take its time with each episode. Good Place seems like it's in a... It's in a hurry. I mean, they're, they're trying to, but, to hit well, I, big plot I, points. I, 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 I yeah, love both I shows, and I, I don't feel comfortable pitting them against each right, other. Yeah, uh, because because they're very different. Them's the rules, Martin. You got <laughs> you got <laughs> Sophie's how, choice. How, however, <laughs> uh, the Atlanta has has some episodes that are just so very different than the rest of the season, and yet within the whole season they work within that universe. Whereas the Good Place is. It's pretty much one thing, and it does pull off the biggest fake outs that I've may, maybe ever seen on network te- television. And yeah, and props to them for doing it there right. and being so funny. But it is we're taking you down this road, and now here in the last episode or last two, now we we switch it. Whereas Atlanta can go off on a complete tangent and still come back to where it is. Yeah, damn it, you took all my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I think of Atlanta as um, Black Seinfeld, all told from George's uh, perspective. Often it uh, is. I mean, you know, right. uh, when you said George, okay, George's yeah, perspective. That like, makes it. Ern is George. No, because because uh, the first season I didn't even like because I hated Ern, the main character, so much. Yeah, because it's like, wow, he thinks he's better than everybody else. Yeah, and he's so not. No, not at all. <laughs> That's that, which is you know. Uh, Unlike the good place, he's he doesn't really want to be better than he is. You know, he just keeps taking farther and farther <laughs> steps down the. Uh, to be fair, even in the hole. even in the second ep- the second season, he does not think or he does think he's better than everyone else, and he has to go through some uh, hard knocks, literally. Oh yeah, he point, does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> to kind of get taken down a peg and go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, maybe I'm not. And. Uh, that second uh, season finale. Oh, that's, that finale oh, that was, was fantastic. Yeah, like how, everything about that because it, it's leading to you to one conclusion, <laughs> and you're like, "All right, here's where the hammer drops, mm. and it falls the other way." And you're like, oh, "But it, dude, it's, it's so well, good." Like what he does, and then how um, the other guy still twists out Paper of it. Boy? So like, no, not Paperboy. Uh, uh, Paperboy Darius, um, oh. competitor. Oh, you know, oh, the, the oh, other yeah, rapper. Yeah, yeah. Who like. He had his guy take the fall for it, yeah. and so he's still on tour. So, like, it could have been, like, such a big fucked up move that would have put them top of the bill. And, like, he still didn't get that. Right. But he's starting to make these these 
bigger, tougher, big baller sure. moves. Kind of I, yeah. I love the scene do. with the uh, when he went to get the passport and the the Jewish guy. Yeah, and he just goes, "Oh no, black lawyers are good, but we just have a lot more connections." It was like it was so diplomatic the way he handled it, uh-huh. and it was so true everything yeah. about it. But it, it was, and, and you just kind of see on his face like, "I really don't know what I'm doing." Right, I have no idea what I'm doing here. That that was kind of his first moment of real humility, especially after the. The Oktoberfest one, where he was such an asshole. He's he's so was such an asshole because oh. I was like, yeah, if you if you date if you're in a relationship, you're gonna find yourself in situations that aren't aren't preferable to you. But you fucking suck it up, and that's what you you compromise, you deal with. Or you put he a smile just on your shouldn't face. have gone at all if he was gonna be a dick the whole time. Just don't go. No, you deal need, with, deal no, with no. that. No, no, I thought about that, but no, you need to go. And you need to plaster a smile on your face. Yeah, I agree. And just, and just grit and but deal with it. But I feel like it. him not going would have been better than It would have been better than what he did. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He No, he was a total bitch about it. And she's it's so a good fantastic. Show. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, <laughs> she is just so fantastic. Zazie Beats is I the just, star. I just wish there was more of it. You know, that's the thing. Is every season, both seasons have been really short. And and they never make me feel like, oh, this is definitely going to be back in nine months. Yeah. You I, know, it's kind of like, well, are you even going to? Yeah. Are, like, <laughs> are you even interested? in this going are you, back are you even really interested in doing this right but whereas uh again not to pit them against each other but the good place has the the narrative through line and you kind of go well you got it's just kind of shocking that a main network tv would would pull off a show like that right it, it took nbc being being in last place <laughs> <laughs> to say you know what guys go for it yeah uh, Mike Shirt, sure, whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to do the afterlife comedy? Oh, sure, dude. Whatever the fuck, please. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's good. Wait, and you had, you know, the return of Sam Malone. Yes. So, I yeah, mean, you got to see know, him serving talk about, beer. <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, you know what? I, oh. I listened to the podcast. He hated that scene. He said he did not want to do that in particular. He had got like such anxiety about having to be behind the bar and try and be that character again, and any even in like a joking way. Because uh, okay, you know, the interviewer was like, himself. "Yeah, I guess." Wait a minute, <laughs> he just t- doesn't t- like t- having t- to t- be t- like an entire movie where he was a barfly bartender this past year. Uh, Hearts beat loud, and he's complaining about doing one scene. Okay, he's probably full of shit then. I yeah, he's totally <laughs> he full of shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, guys, it's time to move on to the year 2017. I don't know oh. if you guys remember that one. That was where, a, where the a year ago. Barry. <laughs> uh, shit, did that come out last year? That came out this year, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, oh. that's this year. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Martin, uh, we were we we're going to have you back in, I know, I'll, I'll in a year <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, for 2018 to mention what your favorite is of 2018 in just a minute. Uh, but 2017 was the show Legion. I, I got Kyle, Les, and Randy back on mic here. And um, Star Trek Discovery and Glow were alternates here, yep. as well as Whoa. Future Man. <laughs> Future Man. I'm the biggest discovery. Um, wow, Discovery didn't make this. Discovery are, is close. What's our what's I, what won it? Uh, Le- Legion won. Yeah, and I'd yeah. like to point out that Randy made the list. Okay, Legion season one was phenomenal, but Legion and it season did not two, suffer from the weird rubber Klingon masks. <laughs> True. You know how much I love Discovery. I love Discovery. I listen to your podcast about Discovery. Oh, thanks, buddy. Every week. Um. <laughs> Legion but season two Legion though, like so, this is where yeah. this is where I start thinking when we're making this list, you have to kind of take the entire show, like take a little bit more of a. That's that's fair. I mean, but we don't know if that. Legion could have a season three recovery and be really great. I mean, it's true. I mean, we did put Parks and Rec here despite its first season. <laughs> exactly. Was there, a, was there a bad part of Legion so far? Uh, I thought the season two is. Just a bit meandering and, well, and long. I didn't it think it was good season weird. Two. You have to long. say season one is far superior to season two. You know, even if you're being you know a harsh critic of season two, a fair critic. There I mean, were parts. Critic, there yeah. were parts yeah. of season two I liked better than one, but overall I like huh? season one better. But there there are arcs in season two that flat skeep me out. You know, one of the things that season one had, I have a real hard time with contagious thought as an idea, uh, yeah. and uh, I used to have nervous tics as a kid. Uh, so like habit looping. Contagious thought, like a lot of the stuff they dealt with in season two, is legit scary to me, mm-hmm. uh, and oh. and it's the kind of scary that actually works on a TV show. Because like, oh fuck, y'all are talking about how talking about this is scary, but you're talking about it to me. 
if I watch all of it, like there was a moment where I almost turned off Legion season two because <laughs> I had to actually work to stop nervous ticks as a kid and I don't want to do it again. And it freaked me out to watch the show. Man, I'm going to sound like Michael Bay, but my whole thing was season one, they had all this money on these big set pieces in the early episodes, mm-hmm. like the one in the kitchen where all the stuff's lying around his head or the scene in the pool. Like they kind of just, they had all this money for this like high level action. And when they come back for season two, you could tell that they were still flying off of season one in terms of promotion. So they didn't invest any money in doing those big set pieces again. And I feel like that kind of hurt season two as well. I don't know if I've just watched a lot of low concept, a lot of shit blow up movies. But (laughs) at this point, like I've seen everything in a room levitate and I've seen everything (laughs) in a room fly around and like I've seen special effects and stuff. And if your show will go higher concept and be smaller with it. Uh, I'm I'm cooler at this point. There's a whole lot of summer blockbusters with no good ideas and a whole lot of telekinesis. <laughs> but here's the thing: it had both. I mean, it did have mm-hmm. high concept, and then it had it, those. It, yeah. Now Legion those, season one had yeah. both, but a lot of the things that were set pieces in Legion season one were not why I was there. Mm-hmm. They were just right. like, oh, cool. So three other people watching this will go badass. And I'm it like, is, yeah, that's great. Can we get to the real story? It is kind of interesting, though, that they went back into the scene where he blows the kitchen up like every third episode in like a flashback. Yes, yeah. So they definitely were trying to get their money's worth out of I think for of- me in season one, knowing that his powers were so much more than making shit fly around a room, mm-hmm. there was a whole lot of Legion season one of like, I need you to figure out your super powered, and then I need you to figure out that this is way more than this superpower. Uh, so there was some of, of Legion season one where I was not enjoying the "Are you crazy? Are you super powered?" because I know the answer, uh, and I'm kind of waiting for David to catch up. Mm-hmm. And season two didn't have any of that for me. Uh, it did meander though. Yeah, there I think were a my, couple of points where its plot just lost the thread. My biggest thing was in season one. I, there was a lot of promise of like, "Oh, is, are they doing this? Are they doing this?" And season two is like, "No, they're not." And I realized when I realized it's almost the Marvel Netflix problem when I realized they weren't as ambitious as I thought they were going to be. Also, what. Uh, Farouk does to his sister in season two is oh, one of up. the cruelest, most fucked up things yeah, I've ever seen on a TV up. show, and it I, it came to a complete pause for me. <laughs> of like, that's the meanest thing I've ever seen a villain do on a network show that's or on, on a show. Yeah. Uh, you didn't watch The Walking Dead then? Oh when no, he I've beats seen, his head in uh, that opening uh, snuff film episode. That, was that is the one episode up. of Walking Dead I've seen in the last five years. And fuck, <laughs> fuck that whole show. Hate it. I'm done with that show. It's, yep. it's dead to me. Call out to the Chappelle Show skit where he beats the head out of like all his old Chappelle Show characters. Yes. <laughs> SNL skit. That was hilarious. Was that SNL? It was an SNL host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Walking Dead did not make our list, guys. <laughs> nope. Not <laughs> even on, no one voted show. for it. All right, guys. Which w- is screwed up because in early seasons, we were all totally on board. Oh, yeah. And season totally one, into I was it. On board we had a, season one. We had a love hate season for a one's while. brilliant. Yeah. I liked the first episode of season one, and then I think I started going, I don't know. It, no, like, there was a, there I was was a chasing point. the dragon with every there was other a, episode. There was a point where you were on a Walking Dead. It's kind of like Sons of Anarchy. You went love hate. It's a little bit more like Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, we are on to finally our last year of the the twenty year span, twenty eighteen, folks. We have Deception. to each pick one. Uh, <laughs> you have to think of this year and what new show. Yeah, new show. Are you guys most impressed with? And uh, this goes out to you guys on uh, in the audience here. So I'm uh, I'm bringing s- you guys back in too. I'm going to step out because I've got four, and I want to see if anybody mentions them all. Yeah, I was also thinking I talk about twenty eighteen shows all the time <laughs> so yeah uh well uh we're gonna start with less than less what do you think is your favorite show this year the thing that absolutely shocked me that should have been a complete uh turd and not been worth watching that was amazing is cobra kai cobra kai over on youtube red yep i still haven't seen this cannot believe that that was a worthwhile show i mean like not even can't believe i've heard about it from everybody i, I thought it was just gonna be at best funny kitsch like like i'll laugh at this like a funny or die sketch sure and it ended up being an actual television show that i cared about where i'm, I'm watching ralph macchio give easily his best acting performance in in years low bar uh, yeah, which granted. So, so you're not. I'm not expecting shit from him. Did and, you say years or decades? Years. Yeah, <laughs> the decades are made of years. Um, <laughs> uh, as well as uh, as well as uh, the guy that plays Johnny Lawrence, uh, uh, Billy Billy uh, uh, Billy Zabka. Yeah, um, he also does an exceptional job. Where I ended up really caring about him, and the show walks this amazing line of of watching these characters grow up and be adults, be true to the characters they were as kids. It, there shouldn't have been anything redeemable to this show outside of a funnier die sketch. I mean, this should have been one of the trailers in Grindhouse. 
Like, it shouldn't have made a whole movie. And Cobra Kai's really, really good. Like, they're Man. making a season two, and I'm I'm actually excited to see what happens with uh, LaRusso and his kid. If this is your best of the year, I have to check this out. Uh, I also watched a show that is already done uh, called Deception, because uh, I'm a sucker for magicians, and I am a sucker for... Uh, Sherlock Holmes rip-off procedurals. You should have just stopped. <laughs> should have stopped Everybody should watch time. Deception. <laughs> it's on Hulu. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan uh, uh, what's, your, what's your favorite show of the year so far? It's actually kind of a cop-out because this is a limited series, and you guys talked about it a few weeks ago, Sharp Objects. <gasps> we did talk about this, and... Uh, I think we were mixed opinion because I didn't watch the whole thing and yet bitched about it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I wonder why. Yeah, I only saw the <laughs> pilot at the premiere. At yeah, I watched the first two episodes and went, I think I know what this show is and I don't like it. I only watched half of the first episode. I was super excited. I was super excited about the, the show. And then when I finally started watching it, I was like, oh, my God, is this ever going to get somewhere? Martin so, Martin well, Thomas is back on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <you're gonna, laughs> but but I, I've heard since that it, it's a great show. Oh, Sharper yeah. Objects, you, you loved it all the way through. Yeah, all the way through. I really was into the character drama about this family. It's beautifully shot. Oh, it's beautifully this shot. This is Gone Girl, Southern Gothic. It's a Gillian Flynn novel, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, it's actually probably the yeah, it's actually the third adaptation of one of her books. The You had Gone Girl, but in between this, these two, there was uh, uh, Dark Places with Charlize Theron. No one remembered it. <laughs> okay. I can't think of another show that has done a be- better job of building atmosphere since... Um, True Detective? True Detective season one, like Kerry yeah. Fukunaga. <laughs> Don't worry. I, yeah, was I, thinking, that. I was thinking that. There's the only one thing. season of True Detective. Well, uh, <laughs> wait, like Mark, Martin's right. right. Mark, yeah. Mark, Mark, you never commercial for the next one with Mahersha Ali? It's going to be a great second season after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way y'all think. Yeah. Uh, Martin, what would you say is your favorite of the year? Uh I, well, I, I yelled this out before, but but uh, while there are two contenders, the ultimately my favorite was Barry. Man, Barry was fucking awesome, and I expected yeah. that to be a show that I would like. And it yeah. started out that way. It's like, okay, this is this is a nice show. It's a quirky little show, and as it went on, it got so much better. It's and a so bait much and switch darker. show. It's a bait and switch show. You think you're getting a comedy? With, uh, with with Bill Hader. Yeah. Bill Hader. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's about a quirky hitman who wants to quit. And Steven Root's in it. That's cool. And the more it goes on, it's like I love every character in this, even the villains. Uh, even when they die. Every time somebody dies in it, I felt like, oh, I hate to lose that guy. And yet so many of the deaths were necessary. But it also gave me a new perspective I, I, I tell you what, no, I won't say it's a new perspective. It was a, spect- a perspective that I had growing that it put the final period on where I don't want to see anything from now on with the ultimate hitman or mafioso because I go like, you know what? You guys are a joke. This show really shows a lot more what goes into that. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm tired of the quirky hitman thing. But that show, that really did it. And that ending – that pulls such a fake out where I'm like, mm-hmm. is this a dream sequence? <gasps> oh, shit, it's not. Dude. Oh, my God. Um, and Henry Winkler. Hey, hey, Henry, <laughs> Holy shit. Henry Winkler com- comes in and goes like, by the way, I'm the Fonz, and this is my show. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I didn't want to reveal that to anybody, but so, so now you know this is my it show. It almost <laughs> felt like you're like, are you in the same show at first? And then you're like, oh, no, you are in, you are the show. <laughs> you are the show. You are so much <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah, he is the show. Up and until... his relationship with the detective, I was just like, I, I love everything about this. And then when we lose that, I'm like, <gasps> uh, yeah, it's, how it's, dare it's, you? It's heartbreaking. <laughs> and I, was, I, I don't think any show affected at me that much now the the closest runner-up would be star trek discovery uh ah, well, and w- that's what no. that's one that toggles last year to this year well i mean, that's i because I, I, to me that was the star trek show that i'd been wanting for so long right because i was tired of all the star trek shows where they were all in a flying uh holiday inn and everybody was friends with each other and i was like finally here's a star trek show with tons of conflict as as there would be, Fe- uh, it's female driven. Right. Uh, I love the 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 main character Michael Burnham. She's like unlike any other Star Trek character we've had at this point. Uh, so, and and every show was all about how much can we break her down? How much can we can we break her heart? Every single episode. And sure, we'll bring in a few things from past shows, but mostly it's it's mostly about her. And it was putting a new spin on things we've seen before. And 
uh, and it made me realize, you know, as much as I like Star Trek, the only Star Trek I've ever loved was the original series. And it was hearkening back to that. I loved everything about that show except the final episode. The reason it didn't make it, it didn't pass Barry was because I absolutely hated the final episode. Really? Yes, because that was the episode that went, all right, I know all you classic Trekkies want this other stuff. So we'll go ahead and cater to you in the final episode. I was like, no, fuck them. They've been talking shit about you. I've been here loyally. Don't, don't, don't cater to them. Hey, what about me? I'm here. It, it, did, it did all the things that I, that I hate that Star Trek does. But prior to that, it was doing everything I wanted. And I, I couldn't have been more in love with that show. I, was, I, I, I almost was, – I, was, I started out, like most people, pirating the first couple episodes. But I had a, a, a coworker say to me, like, man, if you love this show – you really should support it. It's only six dollars a month. I was like, "Was that hey, Mike?" No, it wasn't, okay. no, 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 it wasn't. Very no, Mike it wasn't Mike. It wasn't Mike. It was somebody else. Putting a guilt and I was trip. like, "You know what? You're right." And I, I happily paid, you know that that CBS exclusive because they have they have jack shit for other shit for other shows for a, a, a human being to watch. Right. <laughs> you don't you don't want to watch the relaunch of The Odd Couple with yeah, Matthew Perry? Not, not that or that show where John Lauerkett. And, and <laughs> just stop right there. You, can't. <laughs> you, you lost me. That's John Lauerkett. Uh, but the, the, the show where, the show where, where, where John Lauerkett was the older version of, of uh, uh, Bobby Moynihan. Uh, uh, Bobby Moynihan. Yeah. I was like, are you guys serious? This is what you <laughs> offer instead? Is it like a Big John, Little John reboot? Mm-hmm. Kind of. Like, but there was another kid who, like, there was supposed to be three versions. Yeah, there's three versions. Three, three timelines of, of the same guy. I was like, no. Did he but, take. Like hormone injections at some point. <laughs> you think I that, mean, right? John Larroquette's like six six or something. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what happened to Bobby Moynihan in these interviews. Like yeah, yeah, his yeah. retirement was near yeah, a radiation. He had a growth, he had a growth spread at forty five yeah, years old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnny Neal, now that you're back on, Mike, uh, what was your favorite show of twenty eighteen? Well, I've I got to go with uh, Barry as well, but since it's already been taken, can I just comment that Stephen Root? Can il- just just elevate a show by sitting in a chair. Yes, he can. He doesn't even have to move his arms. Just sitting in a chair and talking, the show is better. I, I don't know what the deal is with this that is, guy. This is why they had him on King of the Hill even when they couldn't credit him. Like yeah. It's just worth having Stephen Root. He's just well, an well, amazing guy. Well, even in Get Out... He was that he was that guy oh, yeah. in, in that oh, show where I was like, man, I've been to parties like this where I I'm so hating it, but I'm sticking around and I meet this one guy and this guy is cool and I can he, just stand talk to him. <laughs> and at the end of the night, he's the guy who's going to he's, he's, he's the worst. He's, 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 the, he's the devil. Yeah. Oh, there's he's a, the there's a reason no one else was talking to this guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just want to see the world through his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, I thought you were. And, and, like, do you think that was a continuation of the DJ from Oh Brother, Where Are You Now? <laughs> <laughs> I, which I just rewatched recently because I rewatch that movie right. uh, once a year. Yeah. I just re- again recently. Uh, he'll always it. be Jimmy James. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I love Barry uh, and was amazed by it. Um, and I've already mentioned this earlier with Greg, but the show that I have to say I've never seen anything like this before is is Random Acts of Flyness on HBO. That show is it's just pretty wild, completely blowing me away. In that it's almost David Lynchian in oh, yeah. in the way it beats around something, and yet you know exactly what they're trying to talk about. It's it's a uh, it's a poem instead of a, a novel kind mm. of a thing, and. Uh, there's just something about it. It's I think it's only five episodes, but it's there are times when you see something and go, uh, okay, this person is going to be huge. Whatever is going on here, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to lead to a lot of things, and that's how I feel about that show. And um, again, I'll go with the Insecure is just nailing it. I, I'm just in love with Issa Rae. Oh, it's so know. good. I just love her. That oh. that should have been on our uh, at least alt list. Yeah. Although Randy okay. dropped the ball. Because, Rand- oh, Randy, you're terrible. <laughs> uh, Kyle, you're back on mic. Uh, what was your favorite of 2018? Oh, my God. I'm going to cheat a little here. <laughs> but we have not mentioned this the entire show. Uh, my favorite this year was the Grand Tour. <laughs> Previously, <laughs> Top Gear. Uh, we're Wait, talking that, that did not Jeremy Clarkson. That is not a new show. Richard Hammond. It actually it came out last year, so technically it would have been the year before. But yeah. 
in an email while we were discussing the algorithm, I was told I could talk about the show for 20 seconds. <laughs> so this show is amazing. <laughs> if you're not yeah, no. Amazon Prime already. <laughs> no, you're getting I, me there. The thing is, I could give a shit about cars. Like, I don't, I, it's never been an interest of mine. I mean, yeah, I, I want to have a nice car, but these guys, they're just such good journalists that they could write about anything and make you care about it. And the fact that they also get in front of camera and they're presenters, it just... There's so much talent there, and if you don't give it a chance, you'll never know. But Man, you fucking so love clever. this show. <laughs> I do. It's it's my favorite show. I can just leave it on in the background, just running all the time. Kyle, yeah. I, I'm going to make a pitch to you here. Kyle's Grand Tour of Grand Tour. The Grand Tour of... <laughs> Man, there's like, every if you episode. include Top Gear, yeah. there's every, like 26 every episode. seasons. Kyle, Grant, you Grant. and I are going to collaborate on this, and we'll call it the Grant Tour. <laughs> what? Yeah, Grant will edit every episode. No, if you gave this mind. to <laughs> me, I'd make it so <laughs> good, guys. I'd make it so good. Uh, Randy, room, what about room. you? All right, so first of all, Is I want to- Is yours actually in 2018? Uh, first of all, <laughs> I, I want to admit that I'm deeply embarrassed that Insecure did not make 2017 alts, because I love that fucking show, and it should have been on there. Do you? Yeah, I love Insecure. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, Les mentioned one that I'd forgotten was on my list, which may be my best of, and that's Cobra Kai. But nobody mentioned the other four, which I'm kind of surprised about. So, the ones that I'm interested in, uh, Castle Rock, I think could potentially wind up being best of. I need, I need to finish watching it. But I think that's interesting. Looming Tower surprised me how good I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Looming Tower was great. Uh, Altered Carbon, I thought was really good on Netflix. Ooh. I mean, it's... It was kind of pulpy, schlocky fun, but I, I would never I put on a fun genre. Like, like, I did not like the ending. I felt the ending was like, oh. well, why does he get over it? <laughs> would you feel the same way if it was one season? If it was the one and done ten years from now, would you be like, altered carbon? No, no. All right. I'm, I, there's potential there. Also, I love the cyberpunk genre. They don't do a lot with it. And the other one that's on my list, and by the way, none of these are, I think Cobra Kai is my favorite, but <laughs> Killing Eve is the other one I mentioned as a possibility. <gasps> Killing Eve is really fucking Killing good. Killing Eve is really good, and Dark as fuck. <laughs> uh, Martin, you, you seem like you want to. Sorry, there, was, there was one other show I thought about because I, I you guys mentioned. Bring, bring the mic down. You, you guys mentioned uh, the Star Trek Discovery, so it was on my mind. But another show I, I haven't heard you talk about that I, I absolutely love was uh, Counterpart. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, the... that got a one-man round of applause from Les. <laughs> Les that because it was such a, such a great, smart show that's bringing in all these concepts of an alternate yeah. Earth. Uh, uh, I mean, I watched it just for J.K. Simmons, so sure. watch him play the two parts so perfectly. Yeah. Because he's picking up right from where he did in Whiplash. And you watch these two guys come together where one is very meek and the other is very alpha male. And you, the longer it goes on, you discover that they're not actually all that different from each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. They just have to discover it. Right. But you have these two Earths where on one of them, Prince is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy brings, brings Prince CDs over and they're like taking them from co like contraband. Like, what the fuck you think is going to happen when the other side discovers we still have him over here? Get this shit out of, <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> and just the whole bringing up the mystery of, okay, so what exactly happened yeah. to separate these two parallel Earths and the one dead body that's stuck between them? It's a large Hadron Collider. We all know it. <laughs> well, perhaps, but the Bernstein Bears. <laughs> but but <laughs> it's 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 that show for hey. I mean, listen. I, I know you say, oh, it's a thinking man's this. It sounds like well, f for me because I think. But it is a more quiet show. But I do think, hey man, if you're into the the intellectualism of it, it's 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 so worth it. I I thoroughly enjoy that show. Yeah, that uh, was really good. And for my part, I, I would say that Barry was going to be my obvious pick for best so far of this year. It's just blowing me away. Um, but my alternates, and one of these you guys can make fun of me for, but Jack Ryan was actually kind of fucking good. I wouldn't I put it on it. best of, but I really did like it a like, lot. I was just really impressed. It's eight episodes. They're all really tight. And um, I, I thought how it... It toggles that line of, like, America, fuck yeah, and America, fuck you. It's just pretty fantastic. <laughs> the, the, the thing about that show is, like, one, I got to the sixth episode, and I thought, all right, I'm halfway. I'll take a break. And then found out, like, oh, there's only two to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this, this is wonderful. Yeah. Right. Uh, but it is one of those shows where everything about this, this, this show is awesome except the main character. 
And it's not you that don't he, like him. What? No, no, it's not that he's bad. He's just the least interesting thing about ah. the show. Wait, you didn't like how good he was at fantasy baseball? <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed at his fantasy baseball picks. <laughs> it's, okay, it's, it's, that it's is he, one of the lamest parts. <laughs> <laughs> it's when he says like, wait, like uh, there's certain actors, and right now it's coming to, to my mind, uh, Donald Gleason, where people probably love him, but I'm like, you like his look. But if you watch him in movies, the characters he play have nothing to them. And probably because he's an Irish guy playing an American who's from nowhere, Wait, USA. Wait, Dom- mm-hmm. Donald Gleason? Yeah. Like from, uh, Are you talking about Star Garth? Wars? From everything he's in. From Ex Machina? E- yeah, oh, Ex Machina especially. That was the movie where I noticed it, where I was like, okay, huh. he's supposed I to- I like him. He's supposed to, yeah, yeah, you like him because you've seen him. He has a certain, he's like a, <laughs> a skinny, pale, kind of like, ne- ne- like ne- nebbish look. Everybody but- likes Ginger. Yeah, yeah, right. like, Gingers like, are the new hotness. Gingers, but but the thing with him and X, e, X Machina was the first time I noticed. It. I was like, you know what, that guy, he's not from anywhere in America. He's from everywhere in America, and actually, actually nowhere that he's even chosen in the movie because he has zero roots or pers- or distinct personality. He's just he's generic enough that everyone can can map their their personality to him. But I also want to step back and go like. No, he's actually got nothing to him. Fuck, and, dude. And this is like a damning assessment. Wow. And I'm, I, I mean, I noticed this about him in every movie. Is that Sam Worthington or some <laughs> shit? What the fuck? He, he kind of is. You're like oh trying to Channing Tatum or Sam no, Worthington no, no, or no, Gerard no. Butler, this no, 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 guy. No, no, Sa- no. Sam Worthington steps up and goes like, hey, I'm your action hero. And it's easy to go like, no, you're not. Shut, shut <laughs> but but Do- Donald Gleason goes like, hey, I'm your nebbish everyman. And I go, mm, you're sort of not. I, you know. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, I, I, I didn't. You're the lottery yeah, yeah, winner. No, you're, Why? You're, you're the guy with a really, with with with, with a with a dad who's awesome, who has Aww. who has opened doors for That's you. Too harsh. And you have a great. You have that look about you. Yeah, that that skinny ginger look that makes everybody go, "Oh, you're like a puppy." Well, but uh, ultimately, he doesn't really have anything. Going. I have to say, He's I did a not. Ex- man. I did not expect our 200th episode to include a diss track on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's un- that's surprising. You know what? It's surprising. We're, we're now that I've to... said it, I want you to watch him in things, and you'll notice it. It's a weird place for a mic drop, but we're going to have to <laughs> drop a mic right here. <laughs> You know what? Uh, yeah. We are not going to do listener questions this time, which is unfortunate because we got a good we gaggle. Got we're going to put them in next week's episode because you guys came through on the questions, and uh, then I uh, I bullied Grant into making Wait a this second. up like a three hour episode. But but we have like our number one question like asker here. Can't he just ask us a question right now? We'll do one question from directly the source. And Jonathan, Jonathan actually had the question. Yeah, you, you, this you week's it? listener question. Jonathan Hapto, Mike, <laughs> live and okay. in person. All right, okay. If I remember correctly, because this was inspired by your guys' uh, 200 episodes, uh, what is your favorite milestone in television ever? Like, it can not have to be just like reaching an episode count, but it could also just be an event or even something out there that I can't even think Ooh, of. Can I jump in? Yeah, go, go. Okay, I will never forget watching O.J. Simpson in the Bronco with my uncle when I was a kid. Like, I'm not even kidding around. Like, this was, like, a big moment, and I didn't know what was going on, but, like, everybody was around the TV, and we were all watching, and I remember this as, like, an early, like, TV bonding moment for That's me. That's a touchstone. That's not a milestone. It's a t- as far as stones, oh. <laughs> like, that would be a different one on the... Uh, Thanos and TV Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> you got your kidney stone. You got your touch stone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Les, you seem to have a milestone in Let's mind. Let's see. Uh, the Challenger exploding. That's a touchstone, uh, touch guys. Those are touchstones. I don't know if so touchstones right Does that thing happen on television? Wait a second. We, I think me and Les heard the question. A, mile, a milestone <laughs> is like... Within the run of a show, oh. what is a significant moment? Yeah, we want to oh. stay away from reality. Ah. So, uh, so uh, when NBC canceled The Apprentice, but then the Electoral nope. College nope. hired nope. it to be our government. <laughs> nope. No? Still no. <laughs> Still no. <laughs> What's um, going on? <laughs> fiction. Fiction, guys. Fiction. Fiction. Mm. Fictional milestones. Oh, okay. What about when Portlandia spoiled all of the wire for me? What? <laughs> one episode. Are you kidding? Their spoiler one actually. Have you guys not seen you? that episode? No. Yes, I have. But okay. they, they actually spoiled it for you. Yeah, like spoiler warning. But they go, Omar, the kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've great. never seen the wire, but I know what happened. Oh man, that's funny. Grant, 
you're you're gonna do you got to go back, right? Um, we have to go back. I mean, is that the moment? I mean, I don't know if that was. I'm trying to think of that as like framing that within the context of a, a of a an achievement within the show. It was. I mean, You're, that was for me the biggest shocker of Lost was the we have to go back moment, the revelation that oh shit, we're doing flash forwards now. I yeah, I suppose like that putting a, a twist on on what was already the, the twist of of the format. Yeah. Um, was a pretty big milestone in television. Yeah. The island vanishing for me on Lost was a jaw fall open. That was moment. pretty big. Yeah. The the empty ocean and them on the helicopter. I that that dropped my friggin' jaw. Yeah. On that show. Yeah. Um I'm not about to fuck with you about Lost. I'm not being facetious. <laughs> that really did. <laughs> do, I, do I look super defensive? <laughs> <laughs> did you, you look like, like defensive. We all tried with saying? caution when we mentioned that show. <laughs> <laughs> really emotional. Um, Game of Thrones. You want to talk about hard home? Maybe that was a big moment. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I think maybe I'm a little bit thrown by the term milestone because I'm yeah. thinking like what. And correct me if you're wrong. If I'm wrong here, because Jonathan, you're in the room. But do you mean by milestone like they hit their 45th episode, or they were able to do uh, um, something like the first like two musicals in in the same season kind of thing? Or like what what's considered a milestone for you? Well, I was thinking at first just with the episode count, but then I realized it would just be The Simpsons. So what I was looking for was in the course of the, uh, television history, some some sort of moment. Now, I don't want to say touchstone, but the idea of – oh, okay. That the uh, event or occurrence – what even more even closer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god, that's Bring way better. In. All right, yeah. okay. I'm Make like, love to that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> now I lost my train of thought because I'm now. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Okay, okay, I was asking for outside of the episode count, some sort of event that seems like the first time ever that occurred on it, in the scope of television. It doesn't have to be specifically just for the show because you can't just be like, oh, first time we saw a twist in uh, Lost was crazy, but not enough. Yeah, for- like like the first time um, a, a a network show tried to do a, a fully live show, like when uh, 30 Rock did a full live episode. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that That seems like a milestone achievement. Yeah, sure. Kind yeah. of thing. Um, oh. And I'll, I'll take that as my answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like every week, uh, I've, I'm perplexed by your question, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's just uh, I think it's a good question, but probably one of those that would merit a little bit more uh, research on our part. Yeah, like, I, I want to think about it for a week. Yeah, and come back next week with like the best answer ever. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next week, Kyle will give you the best an- best answer ever. Uh, but but yeah, that that does lead us to say, um, you know, we got a lot of great questions from you guys, and we appreciate all of them. But we also recognize that we ran very long on this episode. Yeah, and that's pretty much my fault. For doing this, uh, I blame Randy. That's, I blame Randy as well. But I also blame Randy for most things in life. Mm-hmm. I take all the blame. What were we uh, talking about? <laughs> uh, just specifically. Everything. Okay. <laughs> the, the environment, Trump. That's uh, like, all my <laughs> fault. All my fault. Uh, um, but you know what? We've done two episodes of this, uh, you know, reboot of our, of our podcast, and you guys have stuck with us. You guys have supported us. You've helped us to grow and expand in a whole bunch of ways and we really do appreciate all of you guys checking in week to week or every other week or whenever like a title looks like it might be mildly interesting <laughs> whatever it is that makes you guys kind of tune in for an episode and um support us on patreon and yeah, special everything. shout out to our patreon listeners oh, yeah who keep us running and let us let us do this kind of thing and have like with it's some of the streaming us, services that we get us to expand into yeah. a, a studio uh we've been able to evolve over the years that we've been doing this we yeah. we've had you guys come in and record with us mm-hmm. it's great you know what the best thing about our patreon is what like some people have patreons people give them money and they spend the money but we actually have somebody who's responsible with money we have grant davis yeah. who took that money built a freaking studio with it i, I like, don't i don't like spending uh, people money that up. people give us uh, <laughs> no early. like yeah. We're not even exaggerating. Grant is extremely frugal with this money and has yep. been so deliberate and wise with every decision. It's true. I was like, Grant, I would, can I can I buy a replacement kidney with the Patreon money? He's like, no, you you get the dialysis on your own. <laughs> I mean, mildly true. <laughs> uh, 
But hey, where I, did we get these mics? We we <laughs> did get pizza. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> For our 200th episode, <laughs> we will get another pizza in the 200, 200 more. episodes. Guys. Well, the 400th episode is going to be four hours long, so I'll just prepare for that. <laughs> Jeez. Look at how many guests we'll have by then. Oh, like yeah. How many more? 20, 20 guests will have come on in the next 200 episodes. Still four mics, though. Why am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> What's going to be awesome, Apple won't even be a company anymore, but we'll still call them podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. In unison. TV News out. out. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Electric Sweater Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes. All the music for our show is by our friend and original TV dude, Gregory J. Amani Smith. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com and electricsweater.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening. Hey, Kyle, are you ready? Yeah. All right, give us your top 45. Go. 30 Rock Billions, Black Mirror, Broadchurch, Chappelle Show, Community, Doctor Who, Downton Abbey, Fargo, Flight of the Concords, Gadget Man, Game of Thrones, High Maintenance House, IT Crowd, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Last Week Tonight, Louis, is that cool with you guys? Luther, Mad Men, Misfits, Mythbusters, Parks and Rec, Portlandia, Pushing Daisies, Rick and Morty, Sherlock, Spaced, Stranger Things, The Colbert Report, The Crown, The Daily Show, The Good Guys, The Good Place, The Good Grand Tour, The League, The Line of Duty, The Night Manager, The Night of, The Walking Dead, Top Gear, Trophy Wife, Wallander, Westworld, and Wilford. 26 seconds. All right. Whoa. Ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. 30 Rock, Atlanta, Battlestar Galactica, Better Call Saul, Better Off Ted, Black Mirror, Breaking Bad, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Casual Chuck, Dear White People, Deutschland 83, Fargo, Firefly, Flight of the Concords, Friday Night Lights, Future Man, Game of Thrones, Hannibal, Justified, Key, Key and Peel, Last Week's Night with John Oliver, Legion, Master of None, Parks and Rec, Party Down, Sarah Connor Chronicles, Scrub, Sense8, Space, Star Trek Discovery, Terriers, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, The Good Place, The Shield, The Wire, Togetherness, Veronica Marsh, You're the Worst, I Zombie Community, Stranger Things, The Deuce, Tre- Treme, Veep. 27. Oh, I lost. Oh! <laughs> Les, are you ready? Yep. All right, and go. 30 Rock, Always Sunny, Arrest Development, Atlanta, Better Off Ted, Black Mirror, Breaking Bad, Breaking In, Chappelle Show, Chuck, Community, Deadwood, De- Doctor Who, Into the Fucking World, Firefly, Flight of the Concords, Freaks and Geeks, Glow, High Maintenance, IT Crowd, I Zombie, Key and Peel. Last week tonight, we're on Oliver, Legion, Lost, Mad Men, Metal Men, Parks and Rec, Person of Interest, Pushing Daisy, Rick and Morty, Scrub, Sense8, Sherlock, Sil- Silicon Valley, Six Feet Under Space, Star Trek Discovery, Star- Stranger Things, Terriers, Daily Show with John Stewart, Good Place, Lost Room, Office, Sopranos, Wire, Veronica Mars, West Wing, Westworld, you're the worst. 22 yeah. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, ready, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Right, ready? This. And. Mr. Sunshine. Eight seconds. Grant, you bastard.